Okay, so uh, this will be our last topic discussion. No? So, um, teka lang, bago tayo magpunta sa mismong discussion natin, just want to go through some announcement. No? Uh, since matatapos tayo this week, uh, teka, mag-calendar muna tayo. So, since most likely kung kaya ko tapusin tong video ngayon, tapos na talaga yung SEM natin. No? So, Uh, th- today is December 2, no? So, kung natapos ko itong discussion natin today, tapos na talaga yung SEM natin, no? All you have to do is to take your assessments, no? So, is, you still have up to December 14 to 19 naman to accomplish your... Kasi ako na-observe ko maram, medyo marami pa kayong hindi take na quiz, no? And I don't know if nakapag... nakakanood pa kayo ng class discussion ko, but that's okay. No? Kasi alam nyo naman, medyo mahina pa rin yung internet in some areas sa Philippines, no? uh, given the recent typhoons no? that disrupted our homes, our our uh, living, etc. So basta ako, I hope na safe kayo. Okay? So yun lang, um, kaya tapusin yung discussion ngayon, Okay. Then after that, I will give you lots of time, no, to accomplish your remaining quizzes, no, your remaining activities. Okay. So yon. Um, mapapansing ko dito sa quizics, no, medyo may hindi pa na take starting quizics. Okay. Kasi na kapag take na kayo ng until quiz four and quiz five. If I'm not mistaken, ah, sa quiz 5, meron pang hindi nagtatake na. So, take nyo na lang yon quiz 5, quiz 6, then quiz 7, take nyo yan, and quiz 8, okay, quiz 9. Okay, so, hanggang doon na lang, okay. So, meron kayong ilang exams, uh, quizzes pa, hmm. mga anim na, no? take nyo na lang yung mga yan. By the way, yung quiz, ano, 8 and 9, ginawa ko siyang 2 attempts, no? So, you can take the quiz uh, twice, no? And the highest score yung kukunin ko, no? Of course, no? Kayo na bahala mag, ano, gumawa ng paraan to obtain high score, no? Especially kung mababa yung grades nyo, hilahin nyo na, no? So, do whatever you can para ma-maximize nyo yung use ng 2 attempts, no? So, yan. So, two attempts tayo sa quiz 8 and quiz 9. Okay? Tapos, yun. Highest score ang kukunin ko. Then, you can also take your final examination, na That is due on December 19. Okay? So, after this discussion, papost ko lahat ng recordings ng chapter 6, 7, 8, 9, no? Panoorin nyo na lang. Because you have plenty of time pa, no? So, you have at least two weeks to accomplish all our materials, no? So, yun. Basta until no- December 19 lang, no? Kasi by December 21 to 23, mag-encode na kami ng grades, no? Para may grades na rin kayo. Okay. So, ganun lang yung mangyayari sa atin. Okay? So, yun. So, with that, um, okay na ako sa announcement ko. Yung materials na sa Canvas naman, just go to the discussions. Andun lang yan. Okay? So, I'll continue with my um, lesson proper na. Okay? So, again, this will be our last chapter discussion. So, um, yan. So, so, thank you sa pag-attend ng classes ko rin. Although, di tayo na nagkasama-sama starting nung nagbagyo-bagyo. No? Pero, I'm glad na ano na naging students ko rin naman kayo. Mababait naman kayo. Okay. So let's now continue on the physical properties of solutions, no? So chemistry is very re- reliant sa solution. Actually, lahat naman ata sa mundo gawa siya sa solution. Okay? So ano ba yung solution, no? At bakit siya almost everything sa paligid natin? So, pag sinabi natin solution, this is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. No? So, ibig sabihin kapag pinaghalo ko yung dalawang chemical and they were uh, homogenized, no? 
uh, homogeneous yung kanyang appearance. So, yun na solution. Okay? <coughs> ano yung components ng solution? No? So, ang solution, yan ay composed ng dalawang parts. No? So, you have your solute and the solvent. No? So, when you say solute, these are substances that are a uh, few in quantity. No? So, siya yung pinakaonte yung amount relative to the other uh, substance, which is the solvent. No? For example, sa, ano, kunwari, um, let's say, pineapple juice. No? So, yung mga solute doon ay yung mga vitamins and whatever na nakahalo doon. And your solvent doon is, of course, water. No? So, ganun din naman yung blood, no? Yung blood natin, maraming solutes yan, mga cells, no? RBCs, WBC, erythrocytes, etc., etc. So, parang yun yung mga solute doon. Tapos, ang pinaka, ano niya, solvent is, is still water. No? So, composed ng water yung ating blood kasi, no? What else? Oh, let's say, urine, no? So, yung ihe, uh, that is primarily composed of water pa rin, no? Okay? So, water din yan, pero may mga solute-solute yan. May mga small amounts of creatinine, small amounts of urea, no? So, ganun. Yun yung components, no? Na gumagawa sa ating solution. So, again, kapag sinabi solute, ito yung onti yung amounts. Kapag sinabi solvent, ito yung pinakamarami yung amount, okay? And depending on your solute and solvent, you can have different types of solution. Pag sinabi ng solution, hindi siya limited to liquids alone. No? So, pag sinabi ng solution, pwede rin siyang solid, pwede rin siyang gas. No? For example, the gas in the air. No? So the gas in the air is a homogeneous mixture. So that means it is a solution. No? So ang gas sa hangin that is composed of Oxygen gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, argon, etc. Okay? So, yan. So, yan. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, ang ating solution, hindi lang siya li uh, limited to liquids. No? So, they are everywhere. No? So, for example, nga yung gas, yung hangin natin. Okay? Uh, for solids naman, yung mga metals. No? For example, yung brass metal. Yung solder din, yung ginagamit sa electronics, no? yung pang hinag. Okay, so yun yung solder. Okay, so yan. So in this table, may kita natin that depending on your components, you can have different types of solution. For example, yung component mo ay parehas gas. So the resulting state is gas. No? One example is air. Rari, yung isang component, gas is a component, liquid, no? So, ano yung resulting solution? Liquid, no? An example niyan, yung ating soft drinks, no? Ang soft drinks, yan ay tubig na may carbon dioxide gas, no? Kaya siya nagbabubbles, no? Okay. So, yung soft drinks, yan. Gas and solid, okay? Ang resulting solution ay solid. So, ito naman, uh, sa chemistry na ito ginagamit, no? Mga catalyst, no? Sa organic chemistry. Example, yung hydrogen gas sa palladium, platinum. No? So, they are used in different organic reactions. No? Uh, liquid, liquid. No? So they, of course, liquid yung produce nila. Example, yung alcohol natin, beverages. Yung alcohol na panlinis ng kamay natin after going outside. No? So, yun ay mga liquid solutions. Kapag solid and liquid ang pinaghalo mo, then maka-form siya ng liquid an example noon yung ating mga salt no salt solution uh, our urine for example no so yeah and then solid and solid pag pinaghalo mo yan the resulting uh, phase no the resulting solution is solid as well no so one example nga yung metal na brass and yung solder yung panghinang sa electronics no so hindi tayo limited sa liquid solutions lang However, for our discussion, our primary focus is liquid solution. No? So, liquid solution ang primary focus natin because chemistry is very reliant on liquid solutions. No? So, pag pumunta kayo ng chemistry laboratory, puro liquid containers doon kasi yun yung hinahandle namin. 
Okay, so kami yung mga chemists, uh, we are more exposed on liquid solutions talaga. No? Okay, ito yung focus natin ngayon. Okay. Depending on the relevant, uh, <laughs> relevant tuloy. Depending on the relative amounts of your solute and solvent, okay, you can have different types of solution, okay? So, de depende uli sa dami ng solute sa solvent mo, you can have different types of solution. You can have a saturated solution, unsaturated solution, and supersaturated solution. Okay, bakit? Bakit may ganun? Kasi ganito, yung ating liquids, yung ating, ano, let's say, yung ating solvent, may limit yan, okay? Hindi lahat matutunaw niyan. Okay? Sa opinion na lang, maglagay ka ng isang kilong asukal sa isang tabong tubig. Sige, ma-dissolve ma ba yan lahat? Hindi. Okay? Kasi, may limit. No? So, hindi lahat talaga kaya i-dissolve ng solvent. Okay? So, depending sa dami, ng solvent uh, ng solute mo sa solvent you can have the three kara, uh, the three types of solution no? so ano ano yung mga yan pag sinabi natin saturated solution you have enough amount of solute no yung maximum amount ng solute na kaya i-dissolve ng solvent mo so ibig sabihin na reach mo na yung limit okay so ano itsura ng saturated solution so Ano yun? Uh, liquid pa rin naman, no? Uh, one example niyan is yung, for example, uh, ah, naglagay ka ng asukal sa, sa, ano, sa juice. Natunaw lahat, tapos super tamis. Saturated solution yan, pag ganun. Okay? Next one is unsaturated solution. Pag sanabi naman natin unsaturated solution, the word itself suggests na hindi siya saturated. That means, hindi niya na-reach yung limit ng solvent. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nun, onti lang yung nilagay mong solute, no? Kung yan ay, ano, kung juice yan, um, matabang yan, okay? Yung saturated, yung matamis, yung tamang-tama yung timpla. Yung unsaturated, yun yung matabang kasi onti lang yung nilagay mong asukal, for example. Okay? Then, ang super saturated solution, ito yung sobra-sobra na yung nilagay mong solute sakaya ng solvent, okay? So, for example, na buhusan mo ng ano, isang kilong asukal yung ano, isang isang pitcher ng ano, soft juice mo. Ayun, super saturated na 'yan, okay? So, you have more solute than what your solvent can dissolve, okay? So, yeah. And whenever we have a super saturated solution, we can actually form crystals, na. So, yung mga crystal, crystal Kaya yan gawin sa bahay, no? O, kunwari, you want to create a crystal of sugar, no? So, all you have to do is to make a super saturated solution and wait for it to cool, no? So, one example here, no, is yung sodium acetate, okay? So, you, for example, we have here a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. Ibig sabihin, sobra-sobra yung dami ng sodium acetate sa solution. Look at what happened, no? nagpo-form siya ng crystals, no? Okay, so, ganun. So, yung mga crystal-crystal na minsan nakikita nyo sa, ano, sa mga minahan ng, ano, uh, let's say, minahan ng asin, no? Or mga iba pang minerals, yun ay galing sila sa super-saturated solutions, no? So, ganun lang. So, mamumuo sila to form crystals. Okay, so, again, Ano uling logic natin when it comes to saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated? Yung, ano, yung juice, no? Kapag saturated, tamang-tama lang yung tipla kasi you just added the right amount of solute in your solvent. Pag unsaturated, ito yung matabang, no? Kasi onti lang yung nilagay mo ang solute sa solvent, okay? Pag sinabi yung supersaturated, ito yung sobra-sobra yung solute mo. Kaysa sa, so, uh, mas sobra-sobra yung solute mo kaysa sa kaya ng solvent. Okay? So, as a result, pwede ka mag-form ng crystals doon. Okay? When we are mixing solute and solvents, no, we have interactions of the molecules ng solute and solvent. No? So, ano yung mga three 
interactions that we can observe in the solution process now. So in a solution process, we have a solvent-solvent interaction, okay? The solute-solute interaction and the solvent-solute interaction, okay? So kasi merong mga ano, solutions na pag pinaghalo mo, umiinit, meron naman na lumalamig, no? Bigyan ko kayo example ng umiinit, no? Kunwari, ikaw, maglilinis ka ng CR, no? So, syempre, bibili ka muriatic acid, panlinis yun, eh. So, kuha ka ng isang timbang tubig, tapos patak-patakan mo yon ng muriatic acid. Madadaman nyo, mainit yung, umiinit yung timba. Bakit ko alam yon Kasi naglilinis tayo ng bahay. Okay? So, ganun. So, kapag pinatak-patak nyo yung muriatic acid sa tubig, umiinit, no? So, ganun. So, meron din namang re, ano, solution process, no? Meaning, gumagawa ka ng solution na lumalamig siya. Uh, one example is yung tubig, no? Lagyan mo siya ng asin. So, kapag yung tubig nilagay mo sa asin, medyo na-feel mo na lumalamig yung baso. Lumalamig yung lalagyanan ng uh, solution mo. Okay? Bakit? Because of the three interaction that is present in the solution process. Okay? So, para mas makita natin yan, kunin natin yung molecular view ng formation of solution. Okay? In forming your solution, of course, you have your solvent. ba? Diba? And then you also have your solute. Okay? Para maghalo yung particles na yan, your solvent and your solute particles has to separate. No? So, kailangan nila mag-spread out, okay? Para ma-accommodate nila yung isa't isa. But as they separate, may involved na energy doon, okay? So, di ba kung naalala nyo sa intermolecular forces sa attraction, kapag yung particles naghihiwalay, it involves energy intake, no? So, kailangan nag absorb yan ng energy para yung particles nyo mag-separate, Okay? Ah, so, ganun na. So, yun nga. Katulad nga na sinabi ko sa intermolecular forces, kapag yung particles mo gusto mo paghiwalayin, you have to add energy. So, ganun din dito. So, yung solvent, medyo maghihiwahiwalay sila in order to accommodate the solute. Solute, maghihiwahiwalay din. No? Kaya kung napapansin nyo, kapag nagtutunaw kayo ng asin, nakita nyo yung asin, lumiliit ng lumiliit, no? lumiliit ng lumiliit yung crystal niya until fully dissolved na siya. Bakit? No? Kasi yung particles ng asin, naghihiwalay sila. No? So, maghihiwalay sila. Then, once na naghihiwalay na yung mga yan, you can have your solution. No? Yung pagsasama ng solute and solvent, yun ang solute-solvent interaction. Okay? So, pwede sila na maghalo. And as they come together, there is heat involved, no? May energy involved pa rin, no? Okay? So, ito yung solvent-solvent interaction. So, maghihiwala yung mga solvent natin. May corresponding energy yan. Okay? Uh, Solute-solute natin, may corresponding energy din yan kapag naghihiwala sila. Then, lastly, itong solute and solvent, pag naghalo yan, may corresponding energy din. Okay? If you want to solve for the energy of the solution, you can use this formula. The enthalpy of solution is equal to the enthalpy solution 1, uh, enthalpy of step 1, enthalpy of step 2, and enthalpy of step 3. So anyway, hindi naman natin ano, iisipin yan. Na. Basta ano lang yung idea dito, that yung ating solution process, they involve energy. No? So may involved na energy transfer dyan. Okay, so as a result, pwede yung ating solution ay uminit, pwede rin siyang lumamig. No? So yun, depending on the three factors and the magnitude of the energy, yun, pwede ka magkaroon ng uh, heating or cooling ng iyong solution. Okay, so yeah. what else do we have to know about making solution? Uh, so, in making solution, ito yung pinaka-general idea. Like dissolves like. Okay, 
So, this concept is called the miscibility. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinabi miscibility, miscible, pwede sila maghalo. Okay? So, for solution process, para magkaroon ka ng solution, your like molecules should dissolve like molecules. So, ano yung like, no? Yung like natin, it could be either polar or non-polar molecules. Okay? So, that means that if you mix your substances... Uh, if you mix your substances, you have to also uh, take note of the intermolecular forces. No? You have to observe kung ano yung mga intermolecular forces na pwede nila gawin. Okay? So if they have the similar intermolecular force, then pwede sila maghalo. No? Bakit? Kasi kapag hindi yan parehas ng intermolecular force, hindi yan maghalo. Bigyan ko kay example, alcohol pati tubig. Ano meron sa kanila? Ang alcohol ay polar. Ha? Ang tubig ay polar. So, maghahalo yan. They will never separate. No? Pero isipin nyo yung um, tubig and mantika. Naghalo kaya yung tubig and mantika? Di ba? Hindi naman. So, yung tubig at mantika, they will, na, they will never mix because of the differing intermolecular forces of attraction. No? So, yan. So, that's why we say like dissolves like. No? Kasi in order to make solution, in order to make a homogeneous solution, you have to have um, substances with similar IMFAs. No? Okay? So, if you have a nonpolar molecule, they will be dissolved in nonpolar solvents as well. For example, carbon tetrachloride and uh, hexane, no? uh, benzene, pala to, C6H6. Okay? So, the two are both nonpolar because of, ano, because of the geometry no? of the molecules there. No? So, yan, puro nonpolar yan. Okay? So, Ang polar molecules, pwede yun maghalo sa polar solvents din. For example, yung alcohol nga sa water, ethanol. Itong nasa ano, C2H5OH, ethanol yan. Yan yung nasa beverages natin. Sa alak, sa beer, no? So, yan. And ionic compounds are more soluble in polar solvents. One example is yung asin na nilagay sa tubig, no? So, ang ionic compounds, pwede yan humalo sa mga polar molecules via ion-dipole interaction. Okay? So, pwede mag-interact yung ions and yung dipole because of their charges. So, yan. Basta ganun lang isipin nyo. Yung dipole, pwede humalo sa dipole. Yung ions, pwede humalo sa dipole. And yung non-polar, non-polar talaga yung haluan niya. If you mix polar and non-polar, you will never create a solution. Hindi yan maghahalo. So, heterogeneous yan. Nakikita mo yung layers. Okay? So, ganun lang. Yan. So, we're done with the introduction. So, now, let's go sa concentration units. No? So, what are concentration units? These are units no? uh, that tells us about the relative amounts of your solute and your solvent. No? So, it tells us gano'ng karami yung isa over the other one. No? Uh, in terms of the solute-solvent ratio o kaya solute and solution ratio. And marami tayong concentration units so you have to prepare for calculations later. Okay? Um, teka lang. Okay. So, okay na ito. Okay? So, concentration unit natin, uh, again, it tells us about the relative amount of your solute uh, with respect to your sol solvent or the solution itself, okay? So, medyo marami tayong um, concentration units, no? So, first one, we have the percent mass or percent by mass, no? When you solve for the percent by mass, that is the mass of your solute over the mass of your solute plus the mass of your solvent, times 100, no? Punta tayo sa denominator. We have the mass of solute plus mass ng solvent, no? So, ano ba yung pinaghalong solute and solvent? Hindi ba solution din yan? Okay? So, basically, 
represented by mass is the mass of your solute and over the mass of your solution times 100. Pag sinabi naman mole fraction, that is the ratio of the moles of your component of one of your substances over the total moles of the other substances. No? This was discussed in gases. No? So, familiar na kayo niyan. No? Nasa gases yan eh. Okay? Molarity. Pag sinabing molarity, we have the moles of solute over the liters of solution. You have to take note na liters ang um, liters ng solution ang kailangan. Okay? And for molality, molality, small letter M, uh, that is the moles of your solute over the kilograms of your solvent. You have to take note of the subtle difference. Pag molarity, capital letter M, liters ng solution ang nasa denominator. Pag molality, kilograms of solvent ang nasa denominator. Okay? So, yan. By the way, nasa handouts naman lahat ng equation. Okay? So, yan. Percent by mass, mass ng solute over mass ng solution. Mole fraction, mass ng uh, mole ng solute over the mole of the solution or the total moles of your substances. Molarity, that is the mole of your solute over the volume of your in liters. Okay? However, we can express mole as mass over molar mass. Okay? So, pwede natin express yung mole and solute as mass of your solute over its molar mass. So, we can modify, uh, we can rewrite our equation as this one. So, molarity, capital letter M, is equal to mass of your solute divided by the molar mass of solute times the volume of solution in liters. Okay? The unit of molarity is mole per liter. Kasi mole nasa taas, liter nasa baba. For molality, that is the mole of your solute divided by the mass of your uh, solvent. No? Uh, let me change this. Mali yung solution. Solvent yan. Okay? So, that's the mass of your solute divided by the molar mass of your solute times the mass of your solvent in kilograms. Itong dalawang to, uh, itong other two, ano na lang to, mga additional info lang. For example, we have the parts per volume and proof na, or percent, ano, percent volume na. So, saan to ginagamit sa alcoholic beverages, na? even sa alcohols na. May kita nyo ito, 70% alcohol. Ang ibig sabihin nun, 70% na ito ay alcohol. Okay? So, to solve for the percent volume, that is the volume of your solute over the volume of your solution times 100. Okay? Pag sinabi naman proof, all you have to do is to multiply your percent volume by 2. So, ito times 2 mo lang. So, ano yung difference ng proof and percent volume? Okay? Pag sinabi proof, uh, this is uh, used, techni technically used, sa mga gumagawa ng alak. No? So, yung old measurements kasi nila ng ano, pag pagiging alcoholic ng alcohols, no? ng mga alak, is by proof. No? So, ngayon, percent volume na. For example, kunwari, bibili kayo ng tandway ice. No? May kita nyo sa baba, 5% V over V. No? Meaning non, 5% ng solution ay alcohol, ethanol. The other 95% is water. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, mababa lang yung alcohol content na. Pero, tignan mo yung ano, isopropyl alcohol, kung ar itong disinfectant spray ko, nakalagay dyan, 70% alcohol. So, that means, 70% of the solution is ethanol and the remaining and the remaining 30% um, is water lang. Okay, so mas matapang yan. Ito naman, parts per million and parts per billion. Uh, di na natin ito i-cover na. Pero ito naman, I use, sila yung ginagamit, if your substances, no, yung amount ng solute mo with respect to your solution is very, very tiny. No? So very, very subtle. No? Masyadong onte lang. 
yung dami ng solutes mo with respect to your solution. So, we use parts per million and parts per billion. Basically, you multiply the ratio of the mass of your solute and the mass of the solution by 1 million or 1 billion times. No? Again, so sila ginagamit, they are used in, um, in solutions with a very, very small amount of your solutes. No? So, saan yung ginagamit sa chemistry? Ang ginagamit niya sa chemistry kapag nagde-detect kami ng metals sa solution, no? If we detect um, carbonates, no, in solution, no. For example, sa Maynilad, no, inaalam namin diyan yung amount ng amount ng sulfate sa tubig, no. Kapag mataas yung sulfate, pwede ka kasi sa makitunsan mo, no. Laxative kasi yun, pwede kang magtae, no. So, ganun. So, yan. Kaila may very very tiny amounts lang no? mga ganun, okay? So when I say very very tiny amounts, we use parts per million units na. No? So we say one millionth ang dami ng solute with respect to your solvent, okay? So yun na. So yun lang. So ngayon, uh, Nadagdagan tayo ng sandamukal na equation and what can we do about the equation is to use them in calculations. Na. So we can convert one, units, uh, one unit of concentration to the other. No? So all we have to do is to use dimensional analysis. Okay? So, yan. so ito yung scheme. Um, kayo na bahala kung gagamitin nyo yan pero kahit di na. No? Basta alam nyo lang yung flow ng problem. So alam nyo kung ano yung hanap sa problem. Okay, so I'll start with this one, Let number one. A sample of 0.892 grams of potassium chloride is dissolved in 54.6 grams of water. What is the percent by mass of KCl in the solution? Okay, so ano hinahanap? Percent by mass. So if you could still recall the formula for percent by mass is mass ng solute over mass ng solution times 100. So, ano yung mass ng solute natin dito? Mass ng solute natin is um, the mass of KCl, 0.892 grams. And yung mass ng solution, ano yun? Ito ba yun? Hindi yan yun. Okay. Pinagsamang water and KCl yun. Kasi solution, no? kapag sa namin solution, solute and solvent yan. Di pwede solvent lang. Okay? So, that means uh, that's 0 0.892 grams plus 54.6 grams times 100. Solve na natin. Okay? So, again, be careful. Pag sa namin solution, mass ng solute plus mass ng solvent yan. 0.892... Times 100, of course. Um, so, the answer is 1.61% KCL. So, the solution is just 1.61% potassium chloride. No? Okay, so yung 0 0.892 grams ng KCL... 1% lang yun ang kabuwaang mass na ang solution. And it makes sense. Onti lang siya eh. Okay? So, ganun lang. Next one. What is the molality of a solution containing 7.78 grams of urea in 203 grams of water? Na. So, molality daw. Ano yung, ano yung formula ng molality? Molality equals the mole ng solute over the kilogram of solvent. No? How do we solve for the moles of solute? Pwede yung mass ng solute over molar mass ng solute times the kilogram of the solvent. Okay? Again, kilograms. Mag-ingat sa kilogram. Okay? So, burahin ko na to. Ito yung expanded equation yung gagamitin natin. 
mass ng solute, molar mass ng solute, kilogram ng solvent. Okay? Huh? Ano yung mass ng solute natin? So, yung urea yung solute natin. So, 778 grams. Ano yung molar mass ng solute? Mm, edi, hanapin nyo yung molar mass ng urea. Gamit kayo ng periodic table. Fourteen zero zero seven plus one point zero three eight times two. So the molar mass of urea is sixty zero fifty six grams per mole. Okay. Then the kilogram of solvent is what's 203 grams in kilogram? 0 0.203 N. So you divide it by 1000. No? You just move this so that as para my space. Okay. So yeah. So you can solve now. And then, wait lang, wait lang, 7.78.203. Okay. So the molality is 0 0.64. Aning unit, okay? So, aning unit ng molality? Mabansin nyo, yung grams magka-cancel. So you have kilogram and the denominator and mole sa denominator ng denominator. Ano mangyari kapag yung denominator may denominator? It will reciprocate. Okay? Ibig sabihin yung mole mapupunta sa numerator. So the unit is mole per kilogram. Okay? Or, pwede mo rin gamitin yung shorthand, uh, shorthand notation for molality. Okay? 0.64 m. Okay? Pag nakalagay M, meaning non molal. Molal. Nakakabulol nga lang. Molal. Okay? So, when you say molal, yun ay molality. So, pwede 0.64 mole per kilogram. Pwede 0.64 molal. Next one. A solution is made by dissolving 13.5 glucose in 0.1 kilogram of water. What is the percent by mass of this solution? A percent by mass daw. So percent mass is glucose, mass glucose. In solute natin over the mass of your solution. Again, solution. A mass ng solution times 100. Glucose, 13.5 grams. Mass ng solution is mass ng glucose plus yung mass ng solvent, which is 100 grams. Times 100. Okay? So the percent mass is... Hundred. So that's eleven point eighty nine percent. Okay. So eleven point eighty nine percent of the solution's mass is glucose. Okay. So number four, letter A. A 2.5 gram sample of groundwater was found to contain five point four microgram of zinc 2 plus and what is the concentration of zinc 2 plus in parts per million so in parts per million pag sanapin parts per million we are pertaining to the mass of solute over the mass of the solution times 1 million or 10 raised to 6 now in question Ano dapat yung unit ng mass ng solute and yung mass ng solution? 
So, ang unit ng ang unit na kailangan natin gamitin to con, ano, ang unit na kailangan natin gamitin dito sa mass ng solute over mass ng solution ay the same. Okay, so, pwede mo i-convert yan parehas to grams, pwede mo i-convert parehas to micrograms. Okay? But ako, I will prefer to convert micrograms, convert ko to into grams. So, kailangan same ng unit. Bakit? Kailangan nila mag-cancel out. Okay, so kailangan may nagka-cancel out dito. Okay, so what is the mass of our solute? Yung solute yung zinc. Ano? So, this 5.4 microgram. Okay, so let's convert that to grams. Convert natin yan to grams. So, uh, 1 microgram is 10 raised to negative 6 of a gram. 1 millionth of a gram yan eh, di ba? Divided by the mass of your solution, 2.5 grams times 1 million. Magka-cancel yung microgram, magka-cancel yung grams, okay? And then, Ang PPM natin, parts per million ay 5.4 times 10 raised to 6 divided by So, the parts per million is 2.16 no? Ano yung unit? Okay. So, wala siyang unit technically pero kami ginagawa namin dinadugtong namin yung PPM okay? so, Parts per million Marami pa pala ito, no? Sige, tuloy-tuloy lang tayo. Okay, so if you have any clarification, balikan nyo lang yung video ulit, na Post nyo lang. Sagutan ko to lahat. Uh, number 5, a solution is made by dissolving 4.35 grams of glucose in 25 ml of water. Calculate the molality of glucose in the solution. Water is a density of 1 gram per ml. Okay, so ano hinanap dito? Molality. So sige. Molality. Mole ng solute. Ah, yung expanded na. Okay. So, hindi na yung mole. Yung mass ng solute over the molar mass of solute times the kilogram of the solvent. Okay. So, ano hinanap dito? Yan. Yung mass ng solute. Glucose yung solute natin. So, that's 4.35 grams. Okay. Molar mass ng solute. Ang glucose ay may molar mass na. Hanapin natin. 12.01 times 6. 1.008 times 12. 9 times 6. So, molar mass ng glucose ay 180.156 grams per mole. Ngayon, ano yung kilogram ng solvent? Ano ang kilogram ng solvent? Okay. So, mapapansin natin, sabi sa problem, a solution is made by dissolving this in this amount of water. So, itong 4.3 uh, ay 4.35 pala. Ito yung mass ng solute. Itong 25 ml of water, ito yung mass ng solvent. Ay yung volume ng solvent. We have to convert this to mass. Kasi mass yung kailangan. So, ano yung sabi sa, prob ano yung sabi sa question? The density is 1 gram per ml. So, ibig sabihin, if you have 25 ml of water, you have 25 grams of water. Okay? 25 grams of water, convert nyo lang yan into kilograms by dividing it by 1,000. So, that will be 0 0.025 kilogram. Okay? Ganun lang. Be careful of the units. No? Because mali ka lang ng isang unit, mali na ang iyong answers. Yan. So, pwede ka na magkamali sa lahat ng sagot mo. Sayang naman. Okay, solve natin yan. 
divided by 180, 156. Okay. Molality is 0 0.97 mole per kilogram or 0.97 molal, small letter M. Okay. Number six, what is the molality of a solution made by dissolving 36.5 grams of naphthalene in um, 425 grams of toluene? Uh, sino yung solvent? Sino yung solute? Okay? So sabi natin yung solvent yun yung pinakamarami yung amount. Yung solute yung pinakaonte yung amount. Okay? So with that, that means yung ating naphthalene, ito yung solute. Ang toluene, ito yung solvent. Okay. So hanapin daw natin yung molality. Okay? So again, molality is the mass ng solute over molar mass ng solute times the kilogram of the solvent. So ang solute natin ay yung naphthalene, 36.5 grams. Molar mass ng solute, molar mass ng naphthalene, uh, teka lang. 10 times 12, 011, 1.008 times 8. That's 128.174 grams per mole times the kilogram of solvent. Ang solvent natin ay toluene. Okay? Kasi siya yung mas maraming amount eh. So, gawin mo lang yung kilogram. 0 0.425 kilogram. Okay? So, ganun lang. Oops. Taas ko lang ito. Okay. So now let's solve for the molality. That's 36.5, 128, 174.425. So the molality is 0 0.67 mole per kilogram or 0 0.67 molal, small letter m. Ganun lang. Oh, ito. Medyo tricky ito ng 7. Sabi sa 7, the density of a 2.45 molar, kapag capital letter M, kapag capital letter M, ito ay molar. Kapag small letter M, ito yung molal. Okay? Molarity, molality. Okay? So, yan. Kasi nabi molar, ano yung formula ng molar? Molarity. Tingin kayo dito. Pag sinabi molarity, let's mole of solute divided by the volume of the solution. Pag sinabi molality, it's the mole of your solute divided by the mass of your solvent in kilograms. Na? So be careful ha. Baka mapagbaliktad nyo yung dalawa. Again, molarity, mole divided by volume. Molality, mole divided by the kilogram of solvent. Okay? So, sabi dito, number 7. A 2.45 mol, uh, molar, uh, 2.45 molar aqueous solution of methanol is 0 0.976 grams per ml in density. Ayun pala yung density niya, no? 0 0.976. What is the molality of the solution? The molar mass of methanol is 34, uh, 32.04 grams per mole. So, anong sabi sa atin? Yung molarity, gagawin mong molality. Okay? So, yung mole per liter, convert mo yan to mole per kilogram ng solvent. Okay? Paano yun? Siguro mong papaisip kayo, paano yun? Okay, so ganito. Pag ganito ang uri ng problem, you have to assume a volume. Mag-assume kayo ng volume. Um, kasi di ba, mapapansin nyo, binigay lang molarity, density. Tapos hanapin mo daw yung molality. Okay. So, ganito. Di ba, sabi natin, yung molarity, that's the mole per liter ng solution. Okay. Itong liter ng solution, 
pwede natin yan i-convert into mass ng solution, di ba? So, pwede natin ma-convert yan into mass of the solution. Then, saan gawa yung mass ng solution? Gawa yan sa mass ng solute plus the mass of your solvent. Ano yung kailangan sa molality? Ang kailangan natin sa molality ay yung mole ng solute divided by the mass of your solvent. Okay? May kita nyo ba yung relationship? Ito. Yung liter ng solution, i-convert nyo to mass ng solution. Okay. So, tapos, doon sa mass ng solution, pwede natin makuha yung mass ng solvent, which we will need sa molality. Okay? So, kapag ganun yung case, kapag kailangan makunin yung mass ng solution, you have to assume a certain volume so you can make use of the density. Okay? So, anong volume yung ina-assume natin dito? Okay? So, pwede mag-assume tayo ng volume, let's say, na 1 liter. Okay? Assume 1 liter solution. Bakit kailangan 1 liter? Kasi, ganito. Kasi ganito. Di ba yung molarity? That is mole per volume in liters. So, since ito ay 2.45 mole per liter, no? kapag may isang liter ka ng solution, ilang moles meron? 2.45 din. Okay? So, kaya gusto ko 1 liter yung aking volume parate. Kasi kung ano yung value ng aking molarity, yun na yung moles ng ano, solute ko. Okay? Ganun. So, we assume 1 liter solution, okay? Para makuha natin yung moles ng solute, no? So, ano yung mole ng solute natin? Paano masasolve yun? So, sabi natin, molarity is mole divided by volume in liters. To solve for mole, cross-multiply mo lang, mole is equal to molarity times the volume in liters, di ba? Then, uh, molarity, okay? So, that's 2.45 mole per liter times 1 liter. So, ibig sabihin, may 2.45 mole ka rin ng iyong solute. Na. So, no-brainer na kung ano yung molarity mo, yung mole ng iyong solute. Okay? So, may mga given na tayo. Kasi mole ng solute, gagamitin natin yan sa molarity din. Ah, sa molality din. So, mole ng solute. We just found out na ito ay 2.45 mole. Okay? Ngayon, ano naman yung mass ng solute? Okay? So, yung mass ng solute natin, paano yun? Gamitin mo yung density. Diba sabi natin, density is mass over volume. Para makuha mo yung mass, that's density times the volume. Okay. So, solve natin yung mass. Ang density ay 0 0.976 gram per ml. Ano yung volume ng solution? 1 liter or 1,000 ml. So, multiply mo lang yan. Magka-cancel yung ml. You will have grams. 976 grams ng solution. Okay. We just found out that if we have 1 liter solution, the mass of solution is 976 grams. Okay. Tapos, anong pinasabi ko kanina? Ang mass ng solution, ito ay mass ng solute plus yung mass ng solvent. Diba? Yan yung sabi ko kanina. Ang mass ng solution ay mass ng solute eh, plus yung mass ng solvent. Okay? Ngayon, paano mo isasolve yung mass ng solvent? Ito yung kailangan sa molality. Eh. Diba? Pwede ko ba makuha yung mass ng solute? Pwede. No? Kasi kapag hindi yan pwede makuha, wala, walang sagot dito. Okay? The fact na may sagot dito, that means pwede natin makuha yung mass ng solute. Ang tanong, paano? Tingin ka dito sa mga nakalagay sa left. Saan mo makukuha yung mass ng solute? 
sa mole ng solute. Okay. So, from the mole of your solute, you can solve for the mass of your solute. Okay? Paano? Ano yung formula ng mole? Ano yung formula ng mole? Ang daming nangyayari, no? Ganun talaga. Ano formula ng mole? Mole is mass over molar mass. If you want to solve for the mass, that's mass equal mole times the molar mass. Di ba? So, pwede mo, lang, pwede mo nga makuha yung mole, yung mass ng solute from the moles of your solute. Pwede, pwede. Okay? So, ano yung mole ng solute? Pwede 2.45 mole. Ano yung molar mass ng solute? Sabi sa problem, 32.04 grams per mole. Cancel mo lang yan. Cancel, cancel. So, the mass of your solute is... Kopyahin ko na lahat, ha? 78,498 grams. So, ito yung mass ng solute. Yan yung mass ng solute. Okay? So, yan ang mass ng solute. At sulat ko lang dito sa baba. So, kung ang mass ng solute ay 78.498, ano yung mass ng solvent? Para ang mass ng solution ay 976 grams. Okay? So, ito na. Malapit na tayo sa dulo. So, alam na natin yung mass ng solute. Alam natin yung mass ng solution. Ngayon, ano yung mass ng solvent? Isusubtract mo na lang yung solute sa mass ng solution. Okay? So, subtract natin yan. And we will get uh, 976 minus 78.98. Makukuha natin ang mass ng solvent as 80. 897.502 grams. Ito yung mass ng solvent na kailangan sa molality. Okay? So, yan. Ang dami yung pa sikot-sikot lang. Pero the concept, still the same. No? Ginagamit lang natin yung matindihang dimension analysis, yung conversion. Sulat natin. Oh, mass ng solvent, sulat ko na lang dito. So, mass ng solvent, is 897.502 grams. Okay. So now, we have all the required items para makuha ang molality. So, pwede na tayo mag-solve for molality. So, molality equals mole ng solute over mass ng solvent in kilograms. Uh, may mole na tayo ng solute, 2.45 mole. Ano yung mass ng solvent in kilogram? Basically, you divide this by 1,000. That's 0.897502 kilograms. And our final answer is 2.45 divided by 0.897502. 73 mole per kilogram. Okay? That's our final answer. Okay? So, that's our final answer. 2.73 mole per kilogram. So, ano yung mga pinagagawa natin kanina? Okay? Kapag hindi given ang volume ng solution, you can you can assume. No? Pwede naman mag-assume. Pag nag-assume ka ng volume, make sure to use the same volume when using density formula. No? Para makuha mo yung correct mass. Then, we know that the mass of the solution is the mass of solvent plus the mass of your solute. No? Okay? You can solve for the mass of your solute from the moles of your solute using the uh, mass to mole ratio. Then, pag nakuha mo na yung mass ng solvent mo, you can solve for the molality. Okay? So, ganun lang. Tricky, no? So, ganun. Siguro hanggang 10 na lang sagutan ko. Yung iba kayo na bahala. Number 8, calculate the molality 
of a 35.4% uh, by mass, aqueous solution of phosphoric acid, the molar mass of the phosphoric acid is um, 97.99 grams per mole. Ano hinahanap? Molality from the percent by mass. Pwede ba yan? Pwede. <laughs> okay, so pwede yan. So ano, ano yung given sa atin? Percent by mass. Okay. Sabi dyan, 35.4% uh, phosphoric acid yan. Yung aqueous solution. Aqueous solution. Ibig sabihin, ang solvent niyan ay water. Okay. So, pag aqueous solution, ang solvent ay water. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pwede tayo mag-assume ng mass, no? So, assume tayo. Assume 100 grams solution. Okay? 100 grams ng solution, given yung percent by mass nun, so, ibig sabihin nun, 35.4 grams doon ay phosphoric acid. Ang natira ay water. Okay? So, aning ano, natira? Ang natira ay 64.6 grams H2O. Ganun. Um, ganun yung mangyayari sa atin. No? So, yung ating mass, pwede tayo mag-assume no? ng mass ng solution. Di ba kanina sa molarity, volume yung ina-assume. Dito naman sa ano, percent by mass, of course, mass yung ina-assume natin. Mass ng solution. Okay. So, all you have to do is to multiply the percent by mass by the assumed mass to get the ideal uh, assumed Ay, uh, ano, to get the mass of the of your solute no so ganun. Kung kunari 100 grams ng solution meron tayo. So, di 35.4 grams ng phosphoric acid. Yung natira water. Okay. Hindi naman ano, hindi naman limited siya sa 100 grams. Pwedeng kahit anong grams no. Pero ang gusto ko kasi sa 100 grams. Buburahin mo na lang yung percent. Yun na yung sagot na. No? Tignan nyo. Pag binura mo yung percent, 35.4 na rin naman. ba? So, yan. So, kaya ganito yung technique ko. Kung hindi 1 liter, 100 grams. Para, wala na masyadong sisolve. No? Kaya nyo, kaya nyo i-mental. Yung part na yan. Okay? So, ngayon, oh, ano gagawin natin? Oh, by assuming grams of the solution nakuha tayo ng mass ng solute to yung solute natin to yung solvent okay given those two items can we solve for the molality pwede na okay so pwede na tayo makasolve ng molality okay let me use the left side molality tayo molality that's mole of your Solute divided by the kilogram of the solvent. And then we can further expand that. Pwede natin expand yung equation as mass ng solute, molar mass ng solute, times the kilogram of the solvent. Question, may mass na tayo ng solute? Meron na. May kilogram na tayo ng solvent? Meron na rin. Co-convert na lang yung grams ng H2O to kilograms. So, basically, masasagutan na natin siya. Okay? Tapos, it lang. Ano to? Mass ng solute. Lagay natin dito sa gilid. So, ang mass ng solute ay 35.4 grams. Okay? Purahin ko na to. Ang molar mass ng solute, yung phosphoric acid is 97, 99 grams per mole times the kilogram of your solvent, which is water. Basically, you divide that by 1,000. 
to 0 0.0646 kilogram. Okay, and solve mo na. 5, 4, divided. Okay, so the molality is 5.59. Molal. Pwedeng molal, again. Pwedeng mole per kilogram. Pwede ding, small letter M. Pwede ding, molal. Pero for this case, M na lang na maliit. Na. Oh, don't confuse yourselves with capital M. Pag capital M, molarity yan. Kapag small letter M, molality. Number 9, calculate the molality of 5.86 molar methanol solution whose density is 0.927. Okay, parang ginawa lang natin ito kanina. No? So, given ka ng molar, molar, molarity, gagawin mo siyang molality. So, kung anong ginawa natin sa 7, ganun din yung gagawin natin sa 9. Okay? So, mag-a-assume ka. Assume 1 liter solution. So, by assuming 1 liter ng solution, ano yung mass ng solution natin? Okay? Gamitin mo lang yung density formula. This equals to M over V. M is density times volume. Okay? So, that's 0 0.927 grams per ml times 1,000 ml. So, that's 927 grams ng solution. Ano pa? Ano pa pwede natin makuha by assuming 1 liter solution? Mole ng solute. Okay? So, the mole of solute can be obtained using molarity, mole, divided by volume in liters. So, kung gusto mo ng mole, that is molarity times the volume in liters. So, that's 5.86 mole per liter times 1 liter. So, basically, Ang mole natin ay 5.86 mole lang din. Okay? Ano pa? Ano pa pwede natin gawin? O, mass ng solute. Kailangan mo rin yan kasi molality. Okay? Bakit kailangan ng mass ng solute dyan? Kasi, sabi natin, yung mass ng solution ay mass ng solute plus mass ng solvent. Kailangan alam mo yung mass ng solute mo. Okay? Napin natin ang mass ng solute. So, paano kukunin yung mass ng solute? So, to get the mass of solute, you can use the mass-mole relationship. No? So, mole is mass over molar mass. Dami equation, no? So, mass ng solute is mole solute times the molar mass of your solute. So, ano mole ng solute? 5.86 mole. Ano yung molar mass ng solute? Okay, so kunin natin yung molar mass ng ethanol. So, that's 46.069 grams per mole. Okay. Times 5.86. So, ang grams ng solute natin ay 269, round off ko na to, 96 grams. So, yan yung mass ng solute natin, 269, 96 grams. Okay? Burahin ko na to. Since meron tayong mass ng solute, pwede na natin makuha yung mass ng solvent. Paano kinukuha yung mass ng solvent? Mass ng solution minus mass ng solute. So that is 657.04 grams. Finally, we can solve for the molality. The small of solute divided by the kilogram of the solvent. No? So this 5.8863. Uh, mole divided by 
0.65704 kilograms. And that's ano, ano yung, ano yung molality natin? Molality ay 8.92. Ang nangyari, isang problem lang yan. Ganun talaga. No? Basta alam nyo lang yung relationship ng density, mass mole relationship, tapos yung mga concentration unit natin, pwede na kayo makasagot. No? O ito, last one na. Dami ko na nasagutan. Calculate the molality of a uh, 44.6% by mass aqueous solution of sodium chloride. No? Hanapin daw natin yung molality given ng percent by mass. O, parang yung ginawa naman natin sa number 8. No? So, from the percent by mass, kukunin ang molality. So, ano yung i-assume natin natin? No? Ano yung i-assume? 100 grams ng solution. So, if we have 100 grams of solution, ang ating solute ay yung NaCl, 44.6 grams siya. Okay. That also means ang mass ng solvent natin ay yung natira. So, 100 minus 44.6, 55.4 grams yan ng solvent, ng water. NaCl to water. We can solve for the molality na. Okay. Molality is mass ng solute. Mass of your solute over molar mass ng solute times the kilogram of solvent. Mass ng solute is 44.6 grams. Molar mass ng solute, NaCl. Uh, solve natin. Sodium plus chloride, 35.453. So, that's 58,443 grams per mole times the kilogram ng solvent. Okay. So, yung solvent natin na water, divide mo yun sa 1,000. So, that's 0 0.0554 kilogram. Okay. So, the molality, teka lang, check ko lang ang tama yung divide ko ng 1,000. Okay, so the molality is 13.78 molal. Okay, so ganun lang. That's how we deal with concentration units. Basically, paikot-ikot lang siya. Okay. So, I want you to remember all the equations listed kanina. Pwede nyo naman i-print yan. Pwede nyo naman sulat kamay. Then, mag-practice uli kayo kung paano ko sinagutan yung items 1 to 10. Then, pwede nyo i-try yung 11 and 12. No? So, hindi ko na sila sagutan. Kayo naman. Kayo na lang bahala dyan. Okay. Nakalimutan tayo, mole fraction. Sige, sagutan ko na yung 11. Hindi pa pala tayo nagsasagot ng mole fraction. O number 11, a commercial bleach solution contains 36.3.62% uh, by mass sodium hypochlorite in water. Calculate the mole fraction. Okay. So, kapag ganito, percent by mass ang binigay, kailangan mo ng mass. No? Kailangan mo muna na kunin lahat ng mass. So, assume tayo, assume 100 grams na solution. Ano yung mass ng sodium hypochlorite? E di, yung 3.62% yan, which is 3.62 grams na rin. O, ano yung mass ng water? Ito yung natira. So, 100 minus 3.62. 62. Ayan ay 
38 grams. Okay. So, bakit kailangan natin ng masses? Kasi we are talking about mole fraction. Ano ba yung formula ng mole fraction ulit? No? Mole fraction is the mole ng component divided by the total moles. No? So, ganun gagawin natin. Kailangan natin ng moles. So, in solving for moles, kailangan may mass ka. Then, molar mass. Hanapin natin yung mole fraction ng dalawa. Okay? So, pwede yung NaOCl na lang yung kunan natin ng mole fraction. Sodium hypochlorite. No? So, ano yung mole fraction yan? So, that is mole ng sodium hypochlorite over the total moles na meron ka. Ano yung total mole? Yung total mole ng solution. Mole ng NaOCl plus mole ng H2O. Ngayon, paano sinosolve ang mole? No? Mass over molar mass lang. Okay? So, let me rewrite the expression. Mass ng NaOCl, molar mass ng NaOCl. So, ganun din sa baba. NaOCl, molar mass, NaOCl. Plus, mass ng H2O divided by molar mass ng H2O. Okay? Then, what's left is substitution. Palitan mo na. Ano yung mass ng NaOCl? So, sabi sa ating problem, 3.62 grams yan. Ano yung mass ng water? Eh, di 96.38 grams. Ano yung molar mass ng NaOCl? Uh, so, solve, ko na, solve natin. NaOCl O Cl yun ay 74 ay okay so molar mass niya ay 74.442 grams per mole 74 4.42 grams per mole. Ay molar mass naman ng water. Ay sa molar mass ng water, solve mo rin. So that's 18.015 grams per mole. Ano yung mole fraction ng sodium hypochlorite? Solve mo yan. Na. Maraming fraction na yan. Be careful when typing it. Ha? So, lang. Okay. So, mole fraction ng NaOCli, 9 times 10 raised to negative 3. Ano yon? 0 0.123. No, so, 9. So, ito yung mole fraction ng NaOCl, 0 0.09. Ano yung mole fraction ng H2O? Di ba sabi natin kanina, last time sa gases, ang mole fraction ng dalawang component ay equal sa 1. Okay? So, kung gusto mo hanapin yung isang component, that is just 1 minus the mole fraction of the other component. So, that means the mole fraction of water is 991. Okay? 0 0.991. For NaOCl, that is 0 0.009. Ayun. Okay. Ngayon, punta na tayo dito sa next part. No? Malapit na tayo matapos. Ang sagit na na tayo. By the way, may mga ibang problems dito sa... Ano? Ay, ito, ito rin pala yung ibang items dun sa ating sinagutan. No? So, yan. Pwede nyo gamitin yung mga yan sa PowerPoint. Okay, naman, let's talk about the solubility and the temperature. No? Okay. So, what happens... Uh, when our solute, uh, mga solids natin, 
ininit natin sa ating solution, they tend to dissolve, no? So, for example, ito yung graph, no? Okay. So, kung mapansin natin, generally, our ionic compounds, uh, yung solubility nila that increases over, um, over time, no? Kapag nag increase tayo ng temperature. Ano example niyan? For example, yung asukal, di ba? Kung nari, gagawa kang arnibal. Pag ginilagay mo yung asukal sa tubig, yun lang yun. Ma mamumuo yun. Yung mamumuo yung asukal sa ilalim kasi hindi siya malilisolve. No? Pero, try mo initin yun. Ano mangyari sa asukal? Matutunaw sila lahat, no? Okay? So, that means, um, the solubility of solids increases with temperature. Generally. However, kung mapapansin nyo rin itong graph natin, may mga, ano, may mga curve tayong pababa. Yung nasa blue na arrow. Uh, their solubility decreases naman with increasing temperature. Okay? And that is special for sulfate-containing compounds. Yung may mga SO4. Bakit? Kasi over time, no, kapag ang inyong sulfates ay nainit, they disintegrate, no? So, nasisira yung molecule. So, kapag nasira yung molecule, hindi na siya soluble. Okay? So, magiging gas yan eh. So, mawawala siya sa solution. Okay? However, if hindi yan sulfate-containing ano, uh, compound, hindi siya sulfate na compound, the general trend is that the solubility increases with increased temperature. Yan yung general trend. Ang, may, ang sulfates, yun lang yung bumababa kapag tinataas yung temperature. Kasi again, yung sulfates, they can degrade. Pwede sila masira sa mataas na temperature. The molecule will disintegrate na. So, bababa yung solubility niya. Okay? So, itong general trend yung susundin natin. Yung increase in temperature, increase solubility. But not all the time. Okay? So, yan. So, with that idea, we can actually do fractional crystallization, okay? So, ano yung kwento ng fractional crystallization? Sabi natin, ang ating solids, no? Ating ionic compounds, may kanya-kanyang uh, solubility yan sa water. So, for example, we have a potassium nitrate here and sodium chloride here. Ito yung trend ng kanilang solubility in 100 grams of water, okay? So, suppose tingin tayo dito, at 0 degrees Celsius, sino yung mas soluble? Yung sodium chloride or yung K, ano, potassium nitrate? Itong brown na line. So, ang pinaka-soluble at 0 degrees Celsius is sodium chloride. No? So, siya yung pinaka-soluble compared to potassium nitrate at 0 degrees Celsius. No? Pero, as you increase the temperature, what happens? No? Yung solubility ng potassium nitrate that increases, no? Almost tenfold, no? Na yung times 10 yung solubility niya pag tinaas mo yung temperature. Nasusurpass niya yung curve ng NaCl, no? So that means at higher temperature, your potassium nitrate is more soluble than sodium chloride. But at lower temperature, your sodium chloride is more soluble than potassium nitrate. Okay? So, ano mangyayari kapag bumaba yung solubility ng solids? No? What happens kapag bumaba ang solubility ng solids is that they crystallize. Namumuo sila. Okay? So, yun yung reason kung bakit, kunwari, maglagay kayo ng ano, sugar water sa ref. May namumuo dong uh, crystals ng solid. No? For example, sa Ar Arnibal din, ilagay mo sa freezer, mamumuo yung asukal, di ba? Ganon yun kasi. The solubility of some compounds decreases as you decrease the temperature. Na? Okay? So, iba-iba yung kanilang solubility. So, ano yung concept ng fractional crystallization? Okay? You can separate your mixtures by uh, using the idea of the, their differing solubilities at different temperatures. Na? So, ito, uh, side kwento lang to. Suppose you have 90 grams of potassium nitrate with 10 grams of sodium chloride na contaminated na. Okay? So, if you want to separate the two, you can do fractional crystallization. So, you dissolve mo yung, yung solution, uh, itong mixture na to, 
dissolve mo yan sa water at 60 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, at 60 degrees Celsius, matutunaw ba lahat ng potassium nitrate mo? Yes, matutunaw yan lahat. Kasi tignan mo yung limit, no? Di ba 100 grams, 100 ml tayo. 100 ml ang water. So, ang kaya tunawin ng water ay 112 grams ng KNO3. And 90 grams tayo. So, basically, matutunaw lahat ng potassium nitrate. Yung NaCl, lahat ba yan matutunaw? Ganun din. Yes, yung sagot. Kasi at 60 degrees Celsius, the solubility of water, uh, the solubility of sodium chloride in water is 36, uh, 38 grams. No? So, ibig sabihin, yung 10 grams ng NaCl, matutunaw yan lahat. No? Kasi undersaturated siya. No? Unsaturated. No? Okay? So, parehas tayong may unsaturated solution of potassium nitrate and sodium chloride. So, pag 60 degrees Celsius, lahat yan tunaw. Then, ano gagawin mo? You cool your solution. Lagay mo yan sa ref. Lagay mo yan sa freezer. What happens kapag nilagay natin sa freezer yan? Okay? So, ang trend ng kanilang solubility, nagpapalit. No? So, instead na potassium nitrate yung pinaka-soluble, pag naging 0 degrees yan, siya yung pinaka-least soluble na. Yung water, mataas pa rin yung, ay yung sodium chloride, mataas pa rin yung solubility niya. Okay? So, ganun yung idea. So, ano mangyari kapag nag-freeze ito sa 0 degrees Celsius? Sino yung mamumuo? Tignan natin. Ang solubility ng potassium nitrate ay 112 grams kapag 60 degrees Celsius. Pero kapag yan ay nag-0 degrees, 12.1 grams na lang yung pwede ma-dissolve. Ang tanong, ilang KNO3 meron tayo? 90 grams, di ba? Only 12.1 gram nun ang matutunaw. Okay? So, only that portion ang matutunaw. So, ano nangyari sa natirang KNO3? Mamumuo yun. Okay? Mamumuo yung natirang KNO3 kasi hindi na siya kaya i-dissolve ng tubig at 0 degrees Celsius. How about NaCl? Okay, so tignan natin. Sabi natin we have 10 grams of NaCl and they will dissolve totally, no? at 60 degrees Celsius. And nung binabaan natin yung temperature, what happened? So, the solubility of NaCl also decreased, but by just a small fraction. So, from 38 naging 34.2 lang. Around 3.8 grams lang yung nabawas. Ilang grams ng NaCl meron tayo? Sampo. So, sa tingin nyo, tunaw pa rin ba yung NaCl dito? Yes, no? Kasi the water can still dissolve more NaCl. Meron lang tayong 10 grams eh. So that means, no, pag ang ating solution na to, nilagay natin sa freezer, ang mamumuo doon ay yung KNO3. Okay? Lahat ng NaCl ay matitira pa rin sa solution kasi kaya pa rin siya tunawin ng water at 0 degrees Celsius. Pero yung potassium nitrate, only a small fraction of it, will be dissolved. 12 grams lang yung pwede ma-dissolve. Yung remaining 78 grams, mamumuo yun. Okay? So, yun yung concept ng fractional crystallization. So, kapag namuo yun, kukunin mo na yun, pure potassium nitrate na yun. Okay? Ngayon naman, tapos na tayo sa, ano, sa solid solubility. Punta naman tayo sa gas solubility. Okay? Ang trend naman sa solubility ng gases uh, with increasing temperature ay pababa na. So the higher the temperature, the lower the solubility of your gases. No? So ganun. Um, that's why kapag tag-init, no? kapag summer, madalas natin mabalitaan yung fish kill. Yung namamatay yung isda. Bakit? Kasi sabi nila mababa ang dissolved oxygen. Kasi sa tubig may oxygen dyan na nakahalo, no? oxygen gas. Kapag malamig, mataas yung concentration ng oxygen sa, ano, sa liquids nyo. Pero kapag yan ay tag-init, no? uh, bababa yung solubility ng gas na yon sa liquid ninyo. Bakit? Kasi yung init, tandaan nyo, yung heat energy, yung mataas na temperature, 
that can cause your gas molecules to escape, no? So, unting increase lang sa temperature, mas magiging magalaw yung gas particles. So, mas mabilis siya makakatakas sa liquid. So, that means the solubility of gases really decreases as you increase the temperature. Okay? So, kapag mainit, yung gases mas mabilis, mag, mas magalaw, pwede siyang tumakas sa liquid nyo. Okay? So, yun yung dahilan din kung bakit ang soft drinks ay hindi na masarap kapag mainit. No? Kasi... Yung carbon dioxide sa soft drinks, kumakawala. No. Yung carbon dioxide kasi sa soft drinks, yun yung nagpapasarap. No. Yun yung nagbibigay ng um, characteristic taste niya. Yung fizzy taste. No. Parang bumubula-bula. No. So, yun. Pero kapag yung, pag mainit yung soft drinks natin, ano nangyayari? Yung carbon dioxide, kumakawala yan. Nakawala yan sa liquid part. No. So, ibig sabihin nun, hindi na siya masarap. Lasang asukal na lang, di ba? So, yun yung idea. Kaya kailangan malamig yung soft drinks para yung carbon dioxide humalo ng, ma ng maigi sa liquid. So, masarap siya. Pag hindi siya malamig, so, lasang asukal lang siya. Pangit yung lasa. Okay. So, yun yung mga phenomena sa paligid na pwede natin i-relate dito. And the pressure and the solubility of gases can be... Described by an equation, uh, Henry's Law. No? So, nasabi sa Henry's Law, the solubility of gas in a liquid is proportional to the pressure of gas over the solution. So, ibig sabihin, the higher the pressure of your gas, the higher the concentration or the higher the solubility of your gases. No? And that is given by the equation C equals Kp where C is the concentration of your gas na dissolved sa inyong liquid. P is the pressure of gas in a solution. And K is the proportionality constant, okay, or the Henry's Law constant. Ano lang konsepto dito ni Henry's Law? Na sabi niya, yung ating gases daw, pwede, siya, pwede mo mapataas yung solubility niya as long as you increase the pressure. Okay? That's why... Kung yung aquarium, kung mabansin yung aquarium, meron siyang uh, bubbles-bubbles, no? yung hangin, di ba binababble yun sa ilalim? Okay, bakit? Kasi by introducing bubbles of air, you are increasing the pressure ng air no? sa inyong liquids. So as a result, yung oxygen dun sa hangin, hahalo siya sa tubig. No? So that will make your aquatic species Uh, alive na. No? Uh, kasi pwede sila huminga ng oxygen. Okay? And that's why kapag tinanggal nyo yung ano, yung, ox yung air pump sa aquarium, mamamatay yung isda. No? So kapag nilagyan nyo ng air pump yan, buhay yung isda. Kasi nga yung oxygen, no? nawawala yung oxygen kapag hindi na papump. Eh. Okay? So, yan. so that's why ganun sa aquarium. San pa? Kapag ano gumagawa ng soft drinks no, yung carbon dioxide din naman nilalagay agad yan in. Sa dulo yan nilalagay. So kung manonood kayo how it's made sa YouTube, panoorin niyo na lang. Paggawa ng soft drinks ay may bote lang andun yung liquids no, typical liquid. Pero bago matapos yung production ng soft drinks, sa dulo bubugahan niya ng maraming carbon dioxide no. So for example, ito yung bote ito yung bote. So, ito yung source ng carbon dioxide. Tutusok yan, tapos bubugahan niya yung liquid solution ng CO2. So, by increasing the pressure of CO2, um, CO2 ay mas madidissolve sa tubig. So, you will have your carbonated drinks. No? So, ganun yung ano, application nito sa aquarium at sa soft drinks natin. Okay? So, yan. So, by increasing the pressure, you increase the solubility of your gases. No. And, ayun. Ito, ano nangyari ito noong 1986 sa Africa. No. So, what happened in Africa is that may isang lake no, that released uh, tons of carbon dioxide cloud in a nearby village and 1,700 people died. No? Bakit? Kasi ganito nangyari. Ang nangyari is that yung ating lake, no? um, mainit yung lake na yun. Siyempre, Africa, mainit-init dun. 
Tapos, because of the, ano, because of earthquake, landslides, strong winds, no? What happened is that yung water ay na-disturb, no? Tapos, mainit pa. So, what happened is that lahat ng CO2 dissolved sa liquid, umakyat, papunta sa hangin, no? Eh, di ba, malakas yung hangin. So, yung mga CO2, umikot yon sa nearby villages doon. And, what we know is that yung CO2, pwede tayong mamatay dyan, pwede tayong masuffocate dyan. No? Kasi kailangan natin oxygen at CO2. So, 1,700 namatay. 1,700 ang namatay. No? Halos lahat sa village na yon namatay. Just because of this lake, no? That released carbon dioxide. Okay? Sa hangin. Okay? So, before we proceed with the colligative properties, sagot muna tayo ng sa solubility problem. Okay? So, Henry's Law tayo. So, sabi dito, activity number one, the solubility of nitrogen gas at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere is 6.8 times 10 raised to negative 4 mole per liter. What is the concentration of nitrogen dissolved in water under atmospheric condition? The partial pressure of nitrogen gas in the atmosphere is 0 0.78 atm. Okay? So, yung first problem, ano yung kwento niyan? It tells us about the solubility of nitrogen gas at one atmosphere. Okay? So, we can use the Henry's Law constant dyan. No? Uh, we can use the Henry's Law equation. So, ano sabi? sa first sentence. Yung solubility daw ng nitrogen gas at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere is 6.8 times 10 raised to negative 4. So, 6.8 times 10 raised to negative 4 molar nitro of nit uh, molar concentration of nitrogen gas will be dissolved if the pressure of uh, the nitrogen gas in the air is 1 atm now. So, 1 atm. Ngayon, hanapin natin yung constant ng uh, Henry's Law. The Henry's Law constant. So, paano yan? You just divide it by atm. 1 atm. Okay? So, to get the Henry's Law constant, so you just divide it by 1 atm. So, k is equal to 6.8 times 10 raised to negative 4 mole per liter atm or molar per atmosphere. Okay? So, yun lang yung gusto natin sa first sentence. Hanapin yung Henry's Law constant. Pero kung given na yun, wala ka nang gagawin na ganito. Okay? So, after solving for the Henry's Law constant, sagutan natin yung next sentence. What is the concentration of nitrogen dissolved in water under atmospheric condition? The partial pressure of nitrogen gas in the atmosphere is 0 0.78 atm. So, hanapin daw natin yung concentration given na ang pressure ay mababa, 0.78 lang, yung pressure ng nitrogen gas. No? So, C is equals to Kp. Okay, so ano yung constant? 6.8, 10 raised to negative 4, mole per liter atm, times yung pressure ng nitrogen gas, 0.78 atm. So, the concentration of your nitrogen gas in water is... 5.304 times 10 raised to negative 4 mole per liter. So, yan na lang po ang solubility ng nitrogen gas sa hang, ano, nitrogen gas sa tubig kapag atmospheric uh, air lang ang nandyan sa paligid niya. Okay. So, bumababa yung kanyang solubility kapag bumaba yung pressure. Uh, next one. Number two. Calculate the molar concentration of oxygen in water at 25 degrees Celsius for a partial pressure of 0.22 atmosphere. The Henry's Law constant for oxygen is 1.3 times 10 raised to negative 3 mole per liter atm. At this time, given na yung Henry's Law constant. No? So, pwede na natin sagutan ng direct, direct tayong problem. Ang hinahanap ay yung concentration ng oxygen dissolved. No? So, that is C equals Kp. So, Henry's Law constant, 1.3 times 10 raised to negative 3 
times yung pressure ng oxygen sa hangin, which is 0.22. So, ano yung, ano, ano yung concentration ng, ano, ng oxygen sa tubig? Teka lang. So, that is 2.86 times 10 raised to negative 4 mole per liter. So, ganyang karami yung oxygen gas sa tubig, no? Pwede mo pa yan ma-increase, no? If you, uh, if you bubble your water with more air or more oxygen gas, pwede yan. Number three, which of the following gases has the greatest Henry's Law constant in water? at 25 degrees Celsius, methane, neon, hydrochloric acid, and hydrogen gas. Okay. So, ano ba yung reason kung bakit iba-iba ang Henry's Law constant? Ba't hindi na lang siya parang gas law, no? Na isa na lang yung constant. Ito kasi, no? Henry's law constant ay dependent sa intermolecular forces of attraction. Diba sabi natin, in a solution process, we have to consider the solute-solvent interaction. That is the intermolecular forces of attraction between your solute and your solvent. No? This time, yung gas and yung, yung solvent. So that means, if your gas is polar, it will be dissolved in water. Kasi diba sabi natin, like, it, like, uh, like dissolves like, diba? So, ibig sabihin, if yung gas mo ay polar, so, ang iyong, uh, magiging dissolved yan sa water. Kasi polar din yung water. Pero, if your gas is non-polar, so, ibig sabihin nun, it will not be dissolved by that much sa water. No? Kasi nga, like dissolves like, diba? So, of all these molecules, sino yung polar? Alamin natin. So, methane is non-polar. No? Non-polar yan. Bakit? Because of the electronegativity difference. No? So, non-polar yung bond ng C and H. No? If you still recall our Lewis structures, nandun yan. Okay? So, methane is non-polar. Neon atom is, of course, non-polar din yan. Isang atom lang yan eh. O, hindi yan polar. Hydrogen gas, this is also non-polar. Dalawang H atom, kunin mo electronegativity difference. Ang sagot ay zero. Okay? So, hindi siya, hindi siya polar. How about HCl? Ito yung polar na gas. No? So, that means HCl will have the greatest Henry's Law constant. Bakit daw? Kasi polar dissolves polar. Okay? O kaya, like dissolves like. No? Polar yung HCl, polar yung water, so they will really dissolve. No? Uh, Didissolve nila yung isa't isa. Okay, so, yan. Yeah. And then, we will proceed with the last part of our discussion. Lapit na matapos. Which is on colligative properties. No? When we say colligative properties, the word colligative refers to the collective properties of your solution. No? Pinagsama-samang property ng solution. Okay? Of non-electrolyte solution tayo this time. Okay? So, colligative properties are properties of solution that depends on the amount of your solute. No? Or the nature of your solute particles. No? So, ano-ano yung mga colligative properties natin? First one, we have vapor pressure lowering, okay? Given by the Rolls law. Bago tayo po tumuloy dyan, uh, saan ba ang application nito? Ang application nito ay marami, no? For example, pag nagluluto tayo ng pansit, no? Pansit canton, o kaya ng pasta, bakit kaya naglalagay ng asin? Ba't tayo gumagawa ng solution na may asin? Kasi, Colligative properties ang sagot doon. Okay? O mamaya malalaman nyo kung bakit. Bakit kailangan um, yung kalsada sa United States doon? Ba't siya kailangan lagyan ng asin din? Ang sagot doon ay 
colligative properties din. Okay? But yung sasakyan, kailangan lagyan ng um, special na liquid. Hindi pwede yung tubig lang. Kasi colligative properties uli yung sagot din. Okay? So, isa-isahin natin yun mamaya na. So, punta muna tayo dito sa vapor pressure lowering. Kasi ito yung magiging sagot sa ibang, ano, ibang questions na sinabi ko kanina. Okay? So, what happens here sa vapor pressure lowering is that, ganito. When you add solute daw, when you add solute in your solution, what happens is that the pressure, the vapor pressure of the solution lowers. Bumababa yung vapor pressure ng solution. Bakit? Because of the change in the mole fraction of your, ano, of your solution. No? Nagbabago daw kasi yung vapor pressure ng inyong solvent. No? So, yan. So, ano sabi natin kapag vapor pressure lowering? Um, what happens is that kapag naglagay ka ng solute sa solution, ay bumababa yung buong pressure ng solution. Bumababa yung pressure niya. Okay. Kasi, ang nangyayari ay bumababa yung mole fraction ng ating solvent. Okay. So, ganun yung nangyayari. So, if we have a solution with only one solute, so, ibig sabihin, isang solute, isang solvent, no? we can express the mole fraction as x1 plus x2 equals 1. Diba sabi natin yung sum ng mole fraction ay equal lang sa 1. Okay? Since alam natin yung x1, ito yung mole fraction ng solvent, no? Kung gusto natin in terms of the mole fraction of solute na lang yan, so we have to rewrite the equation in terms of x2, no? So mag ang mangyayari sa atin, teka lang, sulat natin dito. Alam natin, x1 plus x2 is equal to 1, no? So, ang x1, yun yung sa solvent. What if gusto ko yun sa solute naman? Mole fraction ng solute. So, I will rewrite this equation as this one. Okay? Then, isa-substitute ko yun. No? Ano yung nangyari dito? Ah, hindi. Ito pala yun. Okay. So, pwede ko yun isubstitute dito sa aking x dito. No? Ka lang. Iba yung derivation niya dito. Dito na ako sa, ano, sa, dito ako sa one note, no? Mas okay yung, mas, alam ko ako yung nag-type yung derivation dito sa one note. Medyo na-confuse ako dun sa PowerPoint, eh. Okay? So, ito. So, if you want to determine the vapor pressure of your solution, that is just the, uh, the vapor pressure of your solution, is equal to the mole fraction of your solvent. Okay? Mole fraction ng solvent yan times its pure vapor pressure. This is given. Ano? Yung pure vapor pressure ng solvent mo, given yan. So, hindi nyo kailangan i-worry yan. Kailangan nyo na lang isolve ay yung uh, mole fraction. Okay? Yung mole fraction. Okay. So, sabi nga natin, if you have only one solute, no? x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. No? If you want to solve for the x2, okay, you can rewrite x1 is equal to 1 minus x2, wherein x2 is the mole fraction of your solute. No? So, pwede natin sa equation kanina. Okay, so we can plug in x1 as 1 minus x2. So, we have this one. Okay, then what's next is a, and a distribute natin yung p not 1. P not 1 basa namin dyan. No? Okay, so P not 1 is the is the pure vapor pressure of your solvent. No? Okay, so pag dinistribute mo yan, you will have this one. So P not 1 minus X2 P not 1. Okay, tapos ano yung gagawin natin? Yung pressure terms pwede natin siya ilipat sa kabila. No? Okay, so, pwede pag nilipat mo yan sa kabila, you can have this expression. Okay? So, that's P not 1 minus P1, this is the vapor pressure of your solution, equal to X2, the mole fraction of your solvent, uh, of your solute, times the 
pure vapor pressure of your uh, solvent. Na. And we call P01 minus P1 as delta P or the change in the vapor pressure or the vapor pressure lowering itself. Na. So, ibig sabihin lang neto, um, it tells us this part tells us kung gano katindi yung binaba ng vapor pressure from your pure to ano to solution okay so this is your pure vapor pressure at to yung solution vapor pressure yung difference niyan is the change in the vapor pressure or the vapor pressure lowering okay so that means we can solve for the vapor pressure of our solution using the equation this na itong equation na to delta p is equals to x2 p not 1 okay so delta p is the change in the vapor pressure at the vapor pressure lowering equal yan sa mole fraction ng solvent ng solute times the vapor pressure the pure vapor pressure of your solvent now so again the change in the vapor pressure o kaya yung vapor pressure lowering that is equal to the mole fraction of your solvent uh, of your solute na times the pure vapor pressure of your solvent na if ever na ang ating solution ay parehas sila volatile ibig sabihin they both exert vapor pressures we can use the dalton's law wherein we can add the vapor pressure of substance A of your solute na vol volatile and the vapor pressure of your volatile, volatile solvent na no? so substance B. So pwede mo pag-add yan. So you will have this modified equation. However, di na natin gagawin yan. So okay na tayo dun sa Rolt's law lang. Okay? So ganun lang. Ganun lang. So again, ano sabi natin dito? Sabi natin sa Rolt's Law, the vapor pressure of your solution depends on the mole fraction of the solute dissolved in your solution. Okay? So you can use this equation, delta P equals X2 P not 1. So ano yung delta P? Yun yung change sa vapor pressure. Yun yung vapor pressure lowering. How much yung nagbago? X2, ito yung mole fraction ng solute. You can solve that easily. P not 1, ito yung vapor pressure ng pure solvent. Okay? So, yan. However, if yan ay parehas na, ano, pagparehas silang soluble, uh, pagparehas silang volatile, so you have to use the Dalton's law, which is hindi na natin gagawin. Okay? So, ito lang yan. So, ito yung Dalton's law derivation. In case na yung gas A and yung gas B nyo, parehas silang volatile. That means they both uh, exert pressure. Parehas silang nag-evaporate. No? Pero kapag solid ang inyong solute, hindi yan mag-evaporate. Malamang solid yan eh. Okay? Pero kapag parehas liquid yung inyong solute, for example, itong alcohol na to, parehas yan nag-evaporate. No? So, we will use this equation instead. Okay? Hindi na natin gagawin yan. And there are some also deviations uh, depending on the intermolecular forces of attraction. So, saan po ginagamit to? We can use the vapor pressure lowering in fractional distillation. Pwede natin mapaghiwa-hiwala depending on uh, your changes sa kanilang intermolecular forces. Na. So, yan. Um, palitan mo lang yung concentration ng isang substance, mag -e evaporate agad yung isang molecule na. So, this is used by chemical engineers to separate uh, mixtures no? ng, ano, ng liquids, no? to purify liquids. Anyway, uh, gamitin natin yung vapor pressure lowering. Vapor pressure of a solution made by dissolving 218 grams of glucose, 180.2 grams per mole, in 460 ml of water. At 30 degrees Celsius, what is the vapor pressure lowering? 
The vapor pressure of pure water at 30 degrees Celsius is 31.82 millimeter mercury. By the way, yung millimeter mercury, okay na yan. Hindi mo na yung convert to ATM. Okay? So, hanapin daw natin yung vapor pressure ng solution after you dissolve your glucose sa water. Okay? So, ano equation pwede gamitin? Delta P equals mole fraction ng solute times the pure vapor pressure of your solvent. No? Solvent. Lagay ko solvent. Or H2O. Ngayon, paano sinusolve yung mole fraction ng solute? That is the mole ng glucose divided by the mole of glucose plus the mole of water times the pure vapor pressure of your water. O ngayon, substitute na lang. Ano yung mole ng glucose? Well, that's 218 grams divided by the molar mass. Okay. Mo lang din yan dito. 218 grams, 180.2 gram per mole. O ngayon, ano yung mole ng water? Di ba sabi natin, we have 460 ml of water. Uh, since the density of water is, or the density of the solution is 1 gram per ml, so ibig sabihin, if you have 460 ml of water, you also have 460 grams of water then. No? 460 grams of water divided by the molar mass of your water, 18.015 g per mole. Tapos, ano yung pure vapor pressure ng iyong solvent, yung water mo? Sabi sa problem, that's 31.82 millimeter mercury. So, ano yung change sa ating vapor pressure? Ano yung vapor pressure lowering natin? Solve lang natin. No? Two eighteen one eighty point two. So times so unchanged the vapor pressure I one point forty four millimeters of mercury. So ganyan yung binaba ng pressure ng solution no? from your original vapor pressure na 31.82 millimeter mercury. Okay. So again, so ang vapor pressure lowering natin ay 1.44 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Ngayon, ano yung vapor pressure ng solution? Okay. So recall natin that delta P is the vapor pressure of pure solvent minus the solution. Okay, this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent minus the solution. So, delta P equals, ay hindi, ano meron tayo? Ano yung hinahanap natin? Yung P ng solution. So, yung P ng solution, solve natin yan. So, P solution is equals to, modify lang natin yung equation, P not solvent minus delta P. 31.82 minus 1.44 millimeter mercury. So, ang final pressure ng solution ay final pressure niya ay 30.38 millimeter mercury. So, ano yung, ano yung patunay na? Ano yung ano, significance na ito? Ang significance niyan is that kapag naglagay ka daw ng solute sa iyong solution, bumababa yung vapor pressure ng ating ng ating um, Solution. So, from 31 mmHg, naging 30 na lang siya. Okay. So, ganun lang. So, bumababa ang vapor pressure ng solution as you add solutes na. Ngayon, ano yung, ano, ano yung relation yan sa mga pinagsasabi ko kanina na ano? Pinagsasabi ko na bakit kailangan ng asin sa pasta? Bakit yung Ano yung yellow sa kalsada sa United States nilalagyan ng asin na? Kasi ganito. Depending on the changes sa ating vapor pressure, pwede tayo magkaroon ng tinatawag na boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Okay? 
So when you say boiling point elevation, tataas yung boiling point. Okay? Pag sinabi natin freezing point depression, bababa yung freezing point na. Okay, so imagine natin yung boiling point elevation. So, bakit tayo naglalagay ng asin sa pasta pag nagluluto? Ay, bakit tayo naglalagay ng asin sa tubig pag nagluluto ng pasta? Okay? Ang sagot doon is para yung ating tubig, hindi siya agad mag-evaporate. No? Kasi what happens when you add your, ano, when you add, when you add your solute sa ating solution, bumababa yung vapor pressure. When we say bumababa yung vapor pressure, what happens is that ito yung ating phase diagram, kung naaalala nyo pa, ito yung, ano, ito yung liquid gas curve, no? pati yung solid liquid curve. Okay? So what happens dito is that yung pressure, di ba bumababa yung pressure? So that means yung graph ay bababa din. So from the solid line, mapupunta siya sa dashed lines, no? Tignan nyo yung, ano, tignan nyo yung boiling point. What happened, no? So itong solid line, ito yung pure solvent. Okay? Ang dashed line, ito yung sa solution. Tignan nyo. What happened to the boiling point as you create solution? Tumaas yung boiling point. From here, napunta doon sa right side. Napunta lalo sa right side. So, ibig sabihin, mas lalo tataas yung boiling point. Okay? So, the reason why we add salt when we are cooking pasta is that para hindi siya agad mag-boil off. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, para mas mainit lalo yung tubig, no? Bago pa siya mag-evaporate, no? So, yun. Hindi agad mag-evaporate yung tubig, no? So, maluluto talaga yung pasta kasi mas mataas na yung temperature ng tubig. No? Mas mataas yung temperature bago siya mag-boil off. No? So, that means mas mataas pa sa 100 degrees Celsius yung tubig kapag nilagyan siya ng asin tas ininit nyo. That's why kapag diba, nagluluto ng pasta, pag natalsikan ka ng tubig, diba, super init, diba? Kasi ganun, no? higher than 100 degrees Celsius yung temperature ng tubig doon. So, yun yung relevance niya sa ating cooking, sa pagluluto sa bahay. Ngayon, tingnan naman natin yung freezing point depression. Bakit bumababa yung freezing point? No? Tingnan nyo kasi, no? So, ito. Diba, nung bumaba yung y-axis natin, nung bumaba yung pressure, umurong din yung solid liquid curve, no? Dito yung melting curve, umatras siya. So, ito yung freezing point originally. By adding salt, napunta siya lalo doon sa negative temperature. Ano effect nun? No? Kapag yung asin, ay kapag yung aso, uh, aso kal tuloy. Kapag yung ano, kapag yung yellow, nilagyan mo ng aso aso kal or any other solute, mas lalong bababa yung kanyang freezing point. No? So, ano mangyayari? So, pwede matunaw agad yung ating uh, Pwede agad matunaw yung ating ano, pwede agad matunaw yung ating ice, no? Kaya ginagamit yan sa United States, no? To defrost yung kalsada. Okay? O kunwari, zero degree sa paligid, edi magi-yellow yung tubig. Lagyan mo ng asin yan, ano yung magiging freezing point ng tubig? Less than zero degrees. So, ibig sabihin matutunaw yung yellow sa kalsada. Okay? Ginagamit din naman to sa, ano, sa mga ice cream, no? Kasi nga, sabi natin, yung yellow, mas lalo siyang lalamig. No? Mas lalong bababa yung temperature niya. So, ginagamit din siya sa ice cream, no? Para mas lumamig. Yan sa lalagyan ng mga ice cream. Yung yellow, minsan nilalagyan ng asin. Para mas lalo lumamig yung ating uh, container ng ice cream. No? So, ganun. So, yun lang. Okay? Pagpansin natin, since mas mataas na yung boiling point ng solution kaysa sa pure solvent, so we can solve for the change in the boiling point. So that's delta Tb equals the boiling point of your pure solvent minus the boiling point of your solution. Okay? Teka lang. Pili ko may may typo sa PowerPoint. Check ko yung ating handouts. 
Ay, yung hand up sa kanya ng type na ito eh. PowerPoint hindi. Okay, sorry. Dito na lang tayo sa hand ups. Okay? So sabi natin, because tumaas lalo yung boiling point ng solution kaysa sa solvent, so we can solve for the boiling point elevation, yung difference ng ano, solution boiling point at yung uh, solvent boiling point. No? So that's delta TB equals TB minus TB naught. Again, basta may naught, ibig sabihin nun, pure solvent. Kapag walang naught, solution yun. No? Pag wala siyang bilog sa taas, solution. So, solution boiling point minus the pure solvent boiling point. Pag kinuha mo yung difference niyan, you get your boiling point elevation. However, yung ating boiling point elevation that is proportional to the concentration of your, uh, that is proportional to the concentration of your solute. However, ang concentration unit natin na gagamitin dito ay molality. No? So, the boiling point elevation is directly proportional to the molality of your solute. No? So, kapag marami kang solute in molal concentration, mas mataas yung boiling point elevation. We can change the proportionality to equality by introducing constant Kb. Okay? So, Kb is the boiling point elevation constant or the ebullioscopic constant and the unit is degree celsius per molal for every substances iba iba yung kanilang kb okay so ganun so sa freezing point depression naman sabi natin yung freezing point ng solution ay mas mababa kaysa sa freezing point ng solvent no so to solve for the change sa freezing point, that's delta Tf equals the pure the pure ano, freezing point of your pure solvent minus the free, freezing point of your solution. Okay, so we just use this equation, and we can also say that the changes or the the, uh, the changes in the freezing point no, is directly proportional as well to your molality. Okay the molality of your solute now so changing the proportionality to equality uh, we have to introduce a constant no so kf ang constant dito the constant of freezing point depression no? we call it the cryoscopic constant and the unit is six uh, uh and the unit is degree celsius per molal no? so yeah and depending on your substance, iba-iba yung kanilang Kb and yung Kf. No? Iba-iba din yung freezing point, iba-iba din yung boiling point. No? So, ganun. So, yan. We can now solve for just some few problems. Onti lang yung application na ito. Don't worry. Okay. So, tignan ko kung meron na dito sa PowerPoint. Dito tayo. lang open ko lang ayun so sabi ko nga last time ah, kanina lang pala sabi ko nga sa inyo na yung ating freezing point and yung boiling point ng ating substances ay iba-iba. So that means their ebullioscopic constant and the cryoscopic constant are also different. Yung Kb and yung Kf nila. So you have to check kung ano yung sinasolve nyo, kung freezing point or boiling point no? changes. No? Kasi magkakaiba yung constant na gagamitin dyan. So let's take this example. Uh, what is the freezing point of a solution containing... 748 grams of ethylene glycol or antifreeze in 3,202 grams of water. The molar mass of ethylene glycol is 62.01 grams per mole. So, ang hinahanap dito ay yung freezing point ng solution. Okay? 
So to solve for the freezing point of the solution, you have to solve first for the delta Tf. No? It is always the delta Tf yung nasasolve first. No? So we know that delta Tf is equals to Kf times the molal concentration of your solute, which is the ethylene glycol. Kasi mas marami yung water kaysa sa ethylene glycol. So ethylene glycol ang solute. What is the Kf for water? Kasi ito yung solvent. Again, yung solvent yung ginagamitan ng Kf, pati Kb, not the solute. So, tingin tayo dito sa table. Ano yung Kf ng water? So, sabi doon, 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. Okay? So, the Kf of our solvent, again, solvent ang lalagyan ng Kf, pati Kb, is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. Molal. Okay, so okay na tayo sa Kf. Ngayon, yung molal na lang. So to solve for the molality, that's moles of solute divided by the mass of your solvent in kilograms. Okay, so solving for that, we get 2.41 molal concentration of your ethylene glycol. We solve for the delta Tf equals Kf. M, so plug in mo yung 186 times yung molal concentration. So you get the change um, 4.48 degrees Celsius na. So ang hinahanap sa atin ay yung freezing point ng solution. Ang nakuha natin ay freezing point depression, yung delta Tf lang. So kung gusto mo kunin yung freezing point ng solution, we know that delta Tf is the freezing point of your uh, solvent minus the solution. Okay? Rewrite that in terms of Tf, no? the freezing point of your solution. So that's Tf of the pure solvent minus the changes in the freezing point. No? Algebra nyo lang yan. So the zero degrees, ito yung freezing point ng water, minus 4.48 degrees Celsius, yun yung delta Tf na nasolve natin. So we get the freezing point of solution equal to negative 4.48 degrees Celsius. No? Okay. So that means if you place ethylene glycol in your ano in water, the freezing point decreases. No? So ibig sabihin, mag zero degrees Celsius man yung paligid, yung ethylene glycol ay yung ethylene glycol solution ay ano hindi pa rin siya magfi-freeze na. No? Kasi 4 deg negative 4 degrees siya magfi-freeze na. No? So saan ba ginagamit to sa car radiator? No? So kapag nasa ano ka, nasa United States na no? or nasa Canada or nasa Siberia, malamig doon no. So kapag yung inyong car radiator, yung tubig doon ay nag-freeze, hindi gagana yung sasakyan niyo. So that's why you have to use antifreeze na, no? ethylene glycol solution. Para hindi agad mag-yelo yung, yung tubig sa loob ng radiator ng sasakyan. So, para gumana yun. Okay? So, yan. So, ganyan lang naman yung mga problems dito. So, more on algebra, algebra na lang. So, yan. Kuha pa tayo ng ibang problems. Let's answer number two. A 7.85 gram sample of a compound with empirical formula C5H4 is dissolved in 301 gram of benzene. The freezing point of solution is 1.05 degrees Celsius below that of pure benzene. What are the molar mass and the molecular formula of this compound? Okay. So, tagalugin natin yung kwento. Sabi dyan, may compound ka daw na nilagay sa solution ng benzene. Tapos, anang nangyari? Bumaba yung freezing point niya by 1.05 degrees Celsius. Ang tanong, ano yung molar mass at yung molecular formula ng substance na nilagay mo? Okay? So, ano yung given sa atin? Okay? So, anong given? Hmm... Mass ng benzene, okay? Ang benzene ay yung solvent natin, no? So, kasi mataas yung kanyang uh, mass, no? 
So, mass ng solvent ay 301 grams ng benzene. Okay, so since benzene ang solvent, siya yung hahanapin natin ng freezing point and uh, Kf. No? Tf benzene. Tf not. No? So, siya yung ating solvent. So, siya yung kukunan mo ng Tf pati Kf. No? So, 5.5 .5 at 5.12. So, 5.5 degrees Celsius ang freezing point ng benzene. Ang kanyang Kf ay 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal. Okay? So, again, yung solvent yung kinukunan ng Kf at Kb. Okay? So, ganun lang. Tapos, ano na? Yung sample natin, yung mass ng solute. Ang mass ng solute ay 7.85 grams. No? Oops. Seven point eighty-five grams. No? So, ito yung mass ng ating um, solute. Ano yung hinahanap? molar mass. Okay. Paano kaya yun? Sige, ganito. Ganito lang yan. So, ano yung formula natin for freezing point depression? So, that's delta Tf equals Kfm. Tanong, asan yung molar mass dyan? Nasa? Molality. Bakit? Bakit nandyan? Kasi, we know molality can be expressed as mass solute over molar mass ng solute times the kilogram ng solvent. Ito yung hinahanap po, molar mass ng solute. Okay? So that means we just have to rewrite the equation in terms of the molar mass of your solute. So just do some algebra. Makukuha natin yung mm solute equals... Tf, mass ng solute, delta Tf, kilograms of the solvent. Okay? So, you just have to rewrite this equation for you, to, uh, for you to solve for the molar mass of your solute. Okay? So, again, kapag molar mass ang hinahanap, nasa molality yun. Okay? Ayan. Ganyan sa quiz eh. Pag molar mass ang inahalap, nasa molality yan. Okay. So, let's solve for the molar mass ng solute. Okay. So, what is the Kf? That's 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal. What is the mass of the solute? 7.85 grams. No? Delta Tf is... In change sa freezing point, ano yon? 1.05 degrees Celsius. Ano yung kilogram ng solvent? Yung benzene. Yung kilogram ng solvent ay 0 0.301 kilogram. So, ang molar mass ng solute, oh, solve na lang natin. So, the molar mass of your solute is 127.17 um, grams per mole. Okay? So, 127.17 grams per mole ang molar mass ng solute. So, nasolved na natin yung first part ng question. Ang tanong susunod ay yung molecular formula niya. So, paano kinukuha yung molecular formula from the empirical formula? Dinidivide yung... Dinidivide yung molar mass na sa molar mass ng empirical formula. Okay? So, that's 127.17 divided by, ano yung, ano yung empirical formula? Molar mass na. So, 5, 12.011, 1.008 times 4. So, 
So, that's 64.087. Okay? So, ang molar mass na itong C5H4 ay 6487. So, para makuha mo kung saan dinibide yung empirical formula, you have to do this, di ba? Ginagawa natin to sa stoic eh. So, 127, 17 divided by 64. 087. So, that's 1.98 or 2. Okay? So, that means impta times 2 mo lang yung iyong molecular, ay yung empirical formula. So, your molecular formula is C10H8. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, in case na tinatanong sa inyo yung molecular formula, given ang empirical formula, just divide the molecular mass by the molecular mass of the empirical formula. Yung makuha mong ratio nun, i-round up mo, kasi yun yung i-times mo sa subscripts ng inyong empirical formula. So this time, times 2 dapat, so C10H8 na. So yun yung ating molecular formula. Okay. Next one. The next one is osmotic pressure. So, ano osmotic pressure? This is the pressure uh, due to the concentration gradient. No? So, osmosis is a process no, in which your solvent molecules will travel through different barriers or different uh, membranes no, in order to uh, in order to equalize the concentration. Okay? So, for example, we have here a solution. In between them, we have a semi-permeable membrane. On the left side, yun ay dilute. Ibig sabihin, onti yung ating, ano, onti yung ating solute dyan. So, ano mangyayari? Yung ating water, yung ating, yung ating water, magta-travel siya towards sa more concentrated side. No? So, as it travels towards the most concentrated side, Yun yung osmosis, no? Ano yung purpose? Bakit may osmosis? Ba't kailangan yung tubig pumunta sa more concentrated side? The, per, the reason is para ma-equalize yung ano, concentration, no? Para magkaroon ng equilibrium, magkaroon ng balance sa concentration ng ating uh, solutions, no? So, what is a semi-permeable membrane? So, when you say semi-permeable membrane, that is a membrane or a boundary that uh, that only allows your solvent molecules to travel not the solvent uh, the solvent molecules to travel not the solute no so baka nabalik to daw sa sinabi ko again kung sinabi sa may permeable membrane ang nangyayari ay yung sol yung ating solvent yun yung magta-travel no hindi yung solute no okay so as your sol uh, as your solvent travels through a semi-permeable membrane to equalize the concentrations, merong osmotic pressure doon na, na e exert na. So, may push yung liquids papunta doon. So, as a result, kapag nag-equilibrate sila, mangyayari, yung water mapupush papunta doon due to the, ano, due to equilibrium. No? So, yun ating water, mapupunta siya doon. So, the height difference of your water will give you an idea kung ano yung osmotic pressure. Okay. Okay. So, to solve for the osmotic pressure, we can use the formula pi is equal to mrt. Pi is the osmotic pressure uh, with, with units of of course, pressure units, pwedeng millimeter mercury, pero madalas atmospheres yan. No? So, that is equal to MRT. So, M is the molar mass. Ah, uh, hindi. M is the molarity, rather, of your solution. So, this time, molarity. Kanina, molality, di ba? Times R, which is the gas constant. Ang gas constant natin ay 0 0.08206 liter ATM per mole Kelvin times your temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so gana. If, ano, itong application natin ay yung sa cell natin, no? So, may kita natin yung osmosis in action kapag yung ating red blood cell ay nilagay natin into a different 
uh, so different solutions now. For example, if we have an isotonic solution, meaning ng iso ay equal concentrations, na isotonic equal concentration. So if our red blood cells are in isotonic solutions, no, ibig sabihin, the concentrations all throughout the surface of your, ano, of your uh, red blood cell and inside the red blood cell ay equal. No? So ibig sabihin, yung ating red blood cell ay normal ang shape. No? If we have a hypotonic solution, what happens here is that mas maraming water sa labas kaysa sa loob ng ating cell. Okay? Ibig sabihin, dilute yung concentration sa labas yung sa loob, mas concentrated. So, what will happen is that in order, in order to balance the concentrations, your water molecules will go inside your cells. So, what will happen is that magkakaroon tayo ng pag-bloat ng red blood cells. So, tataba yung red blood cell. Ginagawa natin yun ng high school, di ba? Yung ating red blood cell, papatakan natin ng isotonic solution, hypotonic solution, and hypertonic solution. Pag nilagay mo yung hypertonic solution, dilute solution yon, tataba yung inyong red blood cells. Kasi, mas concentrated sa loob ng cell kaysa sa labas. So, yung tubig sa labas, papasok sa loob ng cell. So, tataba yan. Okay? Pag hypertonic solution naman, yung concentration sa labas ay mas mataas kaysa sa loob ng cell. So, what will happen is that the water molecules inside your cell will escape, no? papunta sa labas, no? So, as a result, your cell will shrink, no? So, magiging kulubot yung inyong uh, red blood cells. Okay? So, ganun lang yung concept ng osmosis. Okay? So, solve tayo ng isang osmosis problem dito. Isa lang, no? For example, ito. The average osmotic pressure of seawater is 30 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate the molar concentration of your sucrose that is isotonic with seawater. So, hanapin daw natin yung molarity in which your osmotic pressure is 30 atmospheres. No? So, that's pi equals MRT. So, we are solving for the molarity. So, that is pi over RT. Okay, so that's the osmotic pressure divided by the gas constant and the temperature. Okay. So, ganun lang yung gagawin natin. Uh, so, to solve for the molarity, uh, you have your osmotic pressure, which is 30 atm. Gas constant, which is 0 0.08206 liter at TM, mole Kelvin, times the temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin. So, solving for the molarity. So, ano daw yung molarity na yan? That is isotonic with seawater. No? Osmotic pressure. So, that's 123 molar concentration or mole per liter. So, yan daw yung concentration na may same osmotic pressure with seawater. No? So, kapag yung kamay nyo, nilagay nyo dyan sa solution ng asukal na ganyan, kukulubot yung kamay nyo. Bakit kukulubot yung kamay? Kasi mas concentrated yung labas ng kamay nyo kaysa sa loob ng kamay nyo. So, yung water sa loob nyo, lalabas. So, kukulubot yung uh, skin nyo. So, yun yung reason bakit kumukulubot yung balat kapag naglalaba or naguhugas. No? So, yung ating water inside, they go outside no? in order to equilibrate the, ano, the concentrations. Kunwari, sagot pa tayo, number 3 naman. So, a 202 ml benzene solution containing 2.47 grams of an organic polymer has an osmotic pressure of 8.63 millimeter mercury at 21 degrees Celsius. So, calculate the molar mass of the polymer. So, this is still osmotic pressure kasi nasa word naman, osmotic pressure. No? 
sa so pi is equal to mrt. Question, ah, saan ang molar mass? No? So in the formula, ang molar mass ay may kita sa molarity. No? Kasi we know that molarity can be expressed as moles over volume. No? Pwede ring mass over molar mass times volume. Okay? So we'll, we'll do that now. So osmotic pressure is the mass, RT, divided by the molar mass times the volume in liters. No? Volume of your solvent in liters. So ito molar mass yung hinahanap natin. So we all we have to do is just cross multiply na lang. Mm -hmm. Cross multiply lang. So we have molar mass MRT over pi VL. So 2.47 grams times gas constant 0 0.08206 LATM mole Kelvin. 21 degrees. Mm. So that is 294.15 uh, Kelvin. Okay. So in 21 degrees, ginawa ko lang Kelvin. Osmotic pressure. Sabi dyan, 8.63 mmHg. Sige. Ang problema dito. mmHg yan. Kailangan natin gawin yang ATM. So you have to convert that. 760 mmHg, 1 atm. Okay? Times the volume in liters ng benzene. 200. 202 ml yan. So that's 0 0.202 liters. Ang daming conversion, no? Ganun talaga. So cancel yung liters, cancel yung atm, mmHg, cancel then Kelvin, cancel. And then you're left with mole per, grams per mole na. Okay, so, what is the molar mass? Uh, basically, solve mo lang yan. Okay. Uh, 2.47.08206.8.63. So, the molar mass of your pol polymer is 25,992.15. Grams per mole. Ang taas naman. Ang taas talaga. Kasi kapag sinabing polymer, that is a long chain of molecules. No? When I say long chain of molecules, lagpas 100 yung mga atoms dyan. Okay? So, lagpas 10. Kasi yung super dami talaga yan. Dugtong-dugtong. So pwede maglibo-libo ang inyong molar mass kapag ganyan. Okay? So ganun lang. Okay? So let's continue. Malapit na tayo matapos. Colligative properties of non-electrolyte solution. Okay, so ito yung summary natin. Um, ito yung formula na pwede natin gamitin. So boiling point and the vapor pressure lowering. Okay, so the pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction of your solvent times its pure vapor pressure. No? Although meron tayong alternative equation dito, that is delta P is equals to X2. P not 1. So we're in delta P is the vapor pressure lowering itself. No? You change the vapor pressure. That's equal to the mole fraction of your solvent times the pure vapor pressure of your sol. Uh, ala, yung X2 ay yung mole fraction times the pure vapor pressure of your solvent. No? Uh, balikan nyo na lang yung video kanina. Balikan nyo yung constant tayo nag-discuss niyan. Boiling point elevation naman, this is a product of the vapor pressure lowering as well as the freezing point depression. Kasi bumaba yung vapor pressure, di ba? So that means na-adjust yung boiling point pati yung freezing point. So for the changes in the boiling point, so that's delta Tb equals Kb times M, where delta Tb is the change in the boiling point, and Kb is the ano, boiling point elevation constant or the ebullioscopic constant. M is the molality. So, freezing point depression, ganun din, since may pagbabago sa freezing point ng ating solution, pwede mo makuha yung difference na yan, yung pinagbago niya. So, that's delta Tf equals Kf times the M. Kf is the cryoscopic constant, M is the molality. Again, yung Kb and Kf, ito ay 
sa solvent lang po. No? Hindi yan sa solute, sa solvent yan. Osmotic pressure, ito yung ano, uh, when you add solutes, nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, movement ng solvent particles in order to equ and in order to balance the concentrations. No? So you can use the equation pi equals MRT. Pi is your osmotic pressure, M is the molarity, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature. Ngayon naman, paano kapag electrolyte solution yan? Kapag electrolyte solution yan, for example, you have 0.1 mol molal NaCl solution. We know that ionic compounds dissociate into ions. So, pag nag-separate ang inyong NaCl into ions, you have 0.1 molal of Na plus and 0.1 molal of Cl minus. Okay? So, ano mangyayari? So, kapag colligative properties, what happened is that yung ating pag colligative properties ng electrolyte solutions, ang ating original amount ng ating solute na mumultiply siya into a factor. Nagiging times 2, nagiging times 3. Depending on the dissociation process. No? Kapag nag-dissociate ang iyong substance into 3 ions, so di times 3 yung inyong um, times 3 ang inyong uh, concentration. Parang ganun yung mangyayari. No? Mara, yung iyong ionic substance, nag-dissociate siya into 4 ions. Edi, times 4 ang inyong concentration nun. No? The factor, yung multiplier natin, na nagsasabi kung yung gano katindi yung pagdoble or pagtriple ng ating concentration ay tinatawag natin Van Hoff factor. So Van Hoff factor is just the ratio of the number of particles after the dissociation um, compared to your original amount no. Okay? So for non-electrolytes hindi yan magdi-dissociate no. So walang ba ang Van Hoff factor niyan ay 1 no. So you have only one product and one reactant. So, one lang yung ratio niya. For NaCl, ang NaCl that dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus. So, ilang ayon yung nagawa natin? Dalawa. Okay, so, we have two products, isang reactant. So, 2 divided by 1 is 2. Okay? About calcium chloride, pag yan ay nag-dissociate, we have Ca2 plus and 2 Cl minus, no? Dalawang Cl minus. So, ilang ions meron tayo sa product? Isa plus dalawa. So, may tatlo tayo sa product. Ilan sa reactant? Isa lang. So, 3 divided by 1 is 3, okay? So, basically, ang kailangan nyo lang gawin as yung, yung ions, ay yung, yung inyong ionic compound, i-dissociate nyo into ions, no? Na-discuss naman natin yan ng stoichiometry kung paano, no? So, you just have to remember kung ano yung charges nila. Okay? Then, you balance the atoms. No? Okay? So, that means we have to modify our colligative property equation by introducing the Van Hoff factor I. No? You multiplier. Okay? Because depending on your, ano, depending on your ionic substance, iba-iba ang inyong Van Hoff factor. No? Okay? So, ito yung mga Van Hoff factor natin for HCl. For HCl, yan ay magiging H plus and Cl minus. So, magiging dalawang ions yan. So, dapat 2. Pero in, the, in actual, 1.9 lang yung magiging factor niya. For NaCl, magiging Na plus and Cl yan. So, 2. Pero ay, ang measured ay 1.9 lang din. MgSO4, Ideally, dalawa yan, Mg2 plus and SO4 negative 2. Pero in reality, 1.3 lang talaga yan. Kasi ito ay ideal. It assumes na lahat sila magiging ions. Magsiseparate sila lahat into ions. Ito yung reality ng buhay. Which is hindi naman talaga ganun ka-ideal. Okay? Kaya mas mababa yung measured kaysa sa calculated. Okay. So let's check this one, FeCl3. Ano yung mga mapoproduce niyan? Fe3 plus N tatlong Cl minus. So, apat na ions yon Kaya ang Bantoff factor ay 4. 
So, ipapasak mo lang yan dito sa mga formula na to. Okay? So, yan. Papalitan mo lang ng I. Okay? Okay, so punta na tayo sa last slides natin. Colloids, no? So, ang solution natin ay homogeneous mixture. Pero, sabi ko before, di ba, nung pinakaunang topic natin, ang um, substances, they can be homogeneous, pwede rin heterogeneous. Somewhere in between ay yung colloids, no? So, when you say colloids, ano yung difference niya with solution, no? So, ang colloidal particles ay mas malaki kaysa sa solute, pero hindi siya ganun ka laki in order to separate, no? In order for them to separate, no? So, ibig sabihin, it is in the boundary of homogeneous and the heterogeneous mixture, okay? So, malaki yung particles than solute sa solution, pero not that big para maghiwalay yung mga particles. And the colloidal suspension is not as homogeneous as solution. So, pwede ka makakita pa rin ng layers na. And then, they exhibit Tyndall effect. So, what is Tyndall effect? Ito yung scattering of light, no? For example, nagwalis ka. Nung nakita mo yung ray ng light, no? Nandun yung mga dust particles. So, yung hangin, colloid yun. Okay? Because it exhibits Tyndall effect. No? Okay? So, ganun lang. So, ano yung mga types ng colloids natin? So, yan. Depending on your dispersing medium and dispersed phase, you can have different types of colloids. You have aerosol, foam, emulsion, sol, gel, and solid sol. And the following are some examples lang. Okay, so yan, side kwento na lang. So, saan po ginagamit yung colloids? We can use colloids as, ano, as panglinis na. Yun yung, ano, yun yung mga nasa sabon natin sa kusina. Na. So, mga colloids yun. Kasi, di ba, kapag inilawan mo yung detergent soap, nagtitindal effect yun. So, colloid yun na. Okay, so... That colloid is composed of this molecule, sodium, sodium stearate. No? And then, sodium stearate natin, it has a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. No? So for example, may mantika sa, sa food. Hydrophobic tail, yun yung didikit sa mantina, mantika. Hydrophilic eh, head, yun yung nasa labas. No? So, ang mangyari doon is that kapag yung inyong mga sabon, yun yung colloid na sabon, dumikit sa inyong mantika. So, mag-form siya ng tinatawag nating micelles, no? M-I-S-C-E-L-E-S. Uh, -E no? Micelles, no? So, sa itong micelles na to, pwede na yung na-wash off ng sabon, no? Okay? So, ganun lang. Lang. So, that ends the discussion for chapter 9. So, that also means tapos na po yung klase natin for this semester. Okay? So, what I want you to do na lang po is, ano, what I want you to do na lang is to watch the videos, no? And then you have plenty of time to answer all the quizzes natin, no? And our uh, examination. So, you have plenty of time to accomplish that. So, this will be the last meeting and good luck po. So, I will give your grades by December, ano. I will post your grades by December 21 to 23. Okay. So, yun na lang. Basta magsagot na lang kayo ng exam, ha? If you have any questions, do not hesitate to approach me. Okay, so, yun lang. I'll upload this on YouTube and bye-bye. See you, see you. See you na lang sa FEU. Bye-bye.